On day one, I spawned in as an awesome warden ninja, right in the middle of my warden ninja hideout. But there were no other warden ninjas around. In fact, the whole place was full of dread ghouls. While several of them were standing at attention, one of them was standing back and giving orders. Destroy everything, my dark warriors. We are under orders to eliminate every last warden ninja we can find. I didn't understand why this was happening, but I wasn't going to take it lying down. Who's giving you these orders, you cowardly dread ghoul? That's when I heard booming footsteps behind me. I turned and saw a huge dark figure approaching me. I was only a tiny warden ninja, and I didn't have any weapons yet, so he terrified me. I gave the orders. I am Shogun Skull, the ruler of this land. And all who defy me will be destroyed, including you. Shogun Skull pulled out a huge katana. He looked like he meant business. I needed to activate my special power, Ultimate Stealth. I practically turned invisible, immediately causing Shogun Skull and his dread ghouls to lose my trace. Where did he go? He's using his ninja abilities to run away like a coward. No matter, we'll find and destroy him another day. As much as I was ashamed to admit it, all I could do was run. I got out of there and ran out into the alien fields, looking for some food to satisfy my hunger. I managed to find some baked potatoes, but they were being guarded by a band of three brigands. Excuse me, brigands, would you be able to give me one of your baked potatoes? I'm really hungry. Would love to, man, love to. But here's the thing, they're all mine, and I want them all, so that's gonna be a no. The brigands attacked me, even though I was unarmed, and I needed to fight back. Luckily, my unarmed attacks actually did a lot of damage, and soon, I defeated all three of them. That must be my ninja martial arts training kicking in. There's hope for me yet. On day two, after eating some of those baked potatoes and storing the rest, I left the alien fields for the ebony woods, looking for the right place to build a base. The ebony woods are dark and mysterious, perfect for a secretive warden ninja. I used my martial arts powers to start punching down a tree and gathered up the resources to make myself a crafting bench and used it to create a wooden pickaxe. Then I mined into the ground for some stone to make my first set of stone tools and a basic stone katana of my own. Now we're cooking with gas. I used my new tools to clear a tree and start building a new secretive ninja base. I did some mining underground because I wanted the base to be a secret, so most of it would need to be under the surface. It's a good start. I'll do more later, but first, I need to figure out what's going on around here and why Shogun Skull is putting a hit on Warden Ninja Heads. I went exploring around the Ebony Forest looking for clues until I found another gang of Dread Ghouls that Shogun Skull had sent after me. Big mistake, guys. This time, I'm armed. I pulled out my stone katana and made short work of the Dread Ghoul gang, leaving only one remaining. Tell me everything I need to know about Shogun Skull. You fool! Even me talking about him seals my doom. You should know, you are a key part of his... Boom! The last Dread Ghoul exploded! It must have been Shogun Skull's doing. He really was powerful. But what was he trying to say? I'm a key part of what? Better keep watching if you want to find out with me. On day three, I continued searching around the ebony forest. I needed some kind of lead, some kind of vital clue, before I could progress any further. That's when I happened upon a small hut in the middle of the woods, where a strange man was just sitting around. Hi, I'm Zozo. Who are you? I'm a nomad. Oh yeah? What does that mean? It means I used to wander around a lot, but since I got old and settled down, I don't do much traveling these days. What brings you to the ebony woods, Zozo? He gave me some mushroom stew, and I sat down to talk to him. Well, I'm a warden ninja, and I used to live in a big warden ninja hideout with others like me. But then, Shogun Skull attacked, and now I think I might be the only one left. Well, that doesn't surprise me. You know, things were once more peaceful across the land. There were dangerous creatures around, and sometimes a fight would happen, sure. But overall, we lived in harmony. Until one day, all of the leaders across the land suddenly disappeared, and the Shogun Skull rose up taking on everything and everyone. He's the uncontested ruler now. But we can't just let that happen. What should we do, Nomad? It won't be easy, but your quest is simple, Zozo. You're going to destroy Shogun Skull.
From day four to day five, I still had more questions about how the world got this way. I just didn't understand how one person could take over the whole world. Well, Zozo, you must understand that the Shogun didn't just win by sheer brute strength. In his Shogun's palace to the east, he made some valuable alliances with different groups. First, he made an alliance with the Dread Ghoul Army, promising all the land and food they could want if they helped him rise to power. Then, he made a deal with the bandit warlord, the leader of the brigands. They could loot and pillage as they pleased, as long as they helped him crush his enemies. Dread ghouls and brigands started attacking any village or settlement they could find, crushing the opposition to Shogun Skull's rule. But the leaders? Nobody really knows how Shogun Skull got rid of them. He hired some other mysterious group to do his dirty work for him, but who they are has always remained a secret. In other words, to defeat Shogun Skull, there are a lot of other enemies you'll need to fight your way through first. From day six to day eight, I thanked the Nomad for all the information he gave me and decided to set off and return to my base. It was getting dark and I knew that all the mobs would be coming out soon. But on the way back to my base, I saw an innocent pink pixie cornered by a vicious feral squall golem. I needed to intervene. It's ninja time. Pulling out my stone katana, I ran in and fought the squall golem. He was much bigger and tougher than your average dread ghoul, but in the end, my stone blade and ninja training won out. The squall golem was defeated and the pink pixie was grateful for me for saving her life. That was so heroic. Thank you, I majorly owe you for this one. It's no biggie, I'm Zozo, the Warden Ninja. Who are you? I'm Polly, the Pink Pixie. And is there any way I can help you with your quest? How about you come stay at my base for a while and we figure something out together? That sounds like a good idea. So Polly and I returned to my base. I continued mining underground and created a cool room for her to stay in. I'm pretty pleased with this. Good, now I'm on a quest to defeat Shogun Skull. Do you have any idea what might be a good place to start? Well, Shogun Skull is one of the greatest warriors in the world. You're gonna need to train really hard if you want to get good enough to fight him directly. Maybe you should seek out some kind of ninja master to train you. That's an amazing idea, Polly! And so I had my next step, seeking out a ninja master to train me. And if you want to find out what happens next, keep watching until the end. Some big surprises are coming! From day 9 to day 10, I went to an underground cavern with my stone pickaxe to mine some iron for my next set of weapons, armor, and tools. I managed to gather up some iron ore when a huge hydra suddenly appeared in the cavern with me. There was no way I'd be able to fight such a powerful monster directly, so I activated my ultimate stealth and sneaked away to the exit. Sometimes the best way to fight is to not fight at all. From day 11 to day 12, I took the iron back to my base. I created a furnace and smelted it into iron ingots, which I then used to make iron armor, some iron tools, and an iron katana. And with all my fancy new gear and weapons, me and Polly the Pink Pixie decided to journey out to a nearby bayou to look for more clues. After some exploring, we stopped for a minute to talk. So Polly, what do you know about Shogun Skull? I'm trying to collect all the information I can. I think it might help me in my quest. Well, in addition to his dread ghoul and brigand armies, I know he has an elite group. Three warriors spread out across the land who help enforce his will. Three elite warriors? Sounds like I better take care of them before I take on Shogun Skull himself. Who are these three warriors? There's the Gold Creeper, a walking weapon of mass destruction that people always fear is gonna blow up. Then there's the Fire Elemental, a powerful being with mastery over flame. And finally, there's the Crimson Wizard, a crafty and intelligent sorcerer who has mastered the mystic. Wow, sounds like I've got my work cut out for me then. Before I could ask any more questions, a bunch of monster mushrooms attacked us. Even with my iron katana, it wasn't easy to take them down. These mushrooms meant business. But when I did take them down, I transformed into a bigger, stronger warden ninja with 20 hearts. Whoa, this is awesome. Better stick around to see what I transform into next. That's rad, Zozo. But hey, maybe next time we should go somewhere a little drier. This bayou is just gross. From day 13 to day 15, Polly and I returned to my base. I decided to spruce it up a little, adding some plants and other decorative improvements, and actually decided to make myself a proper room. Just because it's a secret underground base doesn't mean it has to be drab and dreary. That's when I remembered what Polly had said to me. 
Maybe next time we should go somewhere a little drier. This bayou is just gross. And it hit me. What could be drier than the Mojave Desert? Maybe I'd have some luck finding someone there. After taking some time to rest, I went out to the Mojave Desert. It was just as dry and hot as I expected, but there didn't seem to be much going on. That's when I was attacked by the Desert Lord, the ruler of the desert. Because he was on his own home turf, he was even faster and stronger than a ninja, and it was too late for me to use ultimate stealth. I broke away from the fight and stood back, but the Desert Lord still seemed ready to battle. You are a trespasser on this land. This is my desert, and I'll never let you or the diabolical Shogun Skull you serve claim it. Wait, there's been a misunderstanding. I don't work for Shogun Skull. I want to defeat him. Oh, I'm sorry. I just assumed you was working for the Dread Shogun. But why? Didn't all the Warden Ninjas used to work for him? My mind was blown. It all made sense now. The mysterious third group who worked with the Shogun Skull, it must have been the Warden Ninjas. But why was he trying to destroy them now? Desert Lord, you've given me a lot to think over. Would you like to come back to my base and we can work together to defeat Shogun Skull? Well, I hate to leave my desert, my true home. For now, it seems working together is the most sensible choice. Let's go, Warden Ninja. The name's Zozo. Follow me. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to my base with the Desert Lord. I mined a new underground room for him, complete with a bed and even a few sandblocks, just to help him feel at home. It's not exactly the desert, but thank you, Zozo. This'll do. Seeing as how exploring had helped me discover plenty of interesting new things so far, I decided to continue visiting new locations, so I left my base once more. I went out to the prairie next to see what I could find. That's where I ran into a camel. Hey, Mr. Camel, I'm Zozo. Is there anything I can help you with? The name's Joe. And as a matter of fact, there is. For the longest time, I've wanted to build a nice beach house on the Rainbow Beach, but it's infested by wraiths now. If you could help me clean out those wraiths so I can build my beach house, I'll give you a weapon I've been holding on to for a while. Something you might find useful. That sounds like a good deal to me, Joe. From day 20 to day 22, I journeyed out to the Rainbow Beach to complete my mission for Joe the Camel. It was a really beautiful place. I could see why he wanted a beach house out here. When I ran into the group of wraiths he told me about, I drew my katana and charged in, slicing and dicing in a way that would make any warden ninja proud. Soon, they were all defeated. I'm getting the hang of this whole ninja thing. Then, I saw something quickly moving towards me and noticed it was the Gold Creeper, one of the elite Shogun Skull Warriors that Polly had told me about. Oh no, I gotta bounce. I didn't have any long-range weapons, so all I could do was run for my life as the Gold Creeper chased me. If it exploded while I was too close, I was doomed. But it kept chasing, getting closer and closer and closer. It started to get too close for comfort, so I jumped forward into some nearby water, hoping it would at least provide some protection. Boom! The Gold Creeper exploded. It was the biggest explosion I'd ever seen, taking a huge chunk out of the beach around me. But I'd survived! I'd completed Joe the Camel's quest, and I'd defeated one of Shogun Skull's three elite warriors! I'd call this a successful day! From day 23 to day 26, I returned to the prairie and met with Joe the Camel again. He was pleased to find out I'd gotten rid of the wraiths, and less pleased to find out the Golden Creeper had blown a big hole into the Rainbow Beach. Still, a deal's a deal, kid, and you held up your end. You can take this set of throwing axes I have. Since you're a ninja, you'll probably benefit from some thrown weapons. Perfect for those stealthy kinds of attacks. Wow, these will be so useful. Thanks, Joe. Don't mention it. If you need me, I'll be off constructing my beach house. With that quest taken care of, I decided to continue exploring the world. I reached the scenic Red Oak Forest, where I ran into a gang of mossy skeletons working for Shogun Skull. You're in some real trouble now. No bones about it. That was an awful pun. Eat axe. I tried out one of my new throwing axes on the first of the mossy skeletons, defeating him instantly. Then I pulled out my iron katana to deal with the rest. It didn't take long for me to defeat them, all except one who I needed some information from. Tell me what Shogun Skull is planning. Heh, <laughs> you're deluding yourself if you think you can beat him. He just sent out the Armored Vindicator. If that thing gets you, you're doomed, doomed. With a strike of my katana, I finished him off. 
that gave me enough XP to level up, getting bigger, jumping up to 30 hearts, and getting access to my Warden Sonic Boom ability. This will be useful for helping me take on that armored Vindicator guy, if I ever even see him. From day 27 to day 31, I started making my way back to my base through the Ebony Forest. I was feeling pretty good about all my recent victories and the new abilities and weapons I'd gained. I'm actually feeling pretty unstoppable right now. And that's exactly when the Armored Vindicator hopped out and attacked me. He was just as big and scary as the mossy skeleton had implied, and he was wielding a menacing axe. Your journey is at an end, Warden Ninja. If you give up now, I can promise it'll be relatively painless. I'll never give up. I'm willing to fight you to the bitter end. Good. I was hoping you'd say that. The Armored Vindicator attacked once more. Every hit he gave me was shockingly damaging. Even with all my upgrades, I couldn't beat him at my current strength. Instead, I turned and ran back towards my base, narrowly managing to outrun and lose the Armored Vindicator. That would be a battle for another day. When I reached my base, the Desert Lord and Polly the Pink Pixie seemed impressed with my new size. Looks like that training is really paying off, Zozo. You're looking swole. It's true, just so much bigger and stronger than you used to be. And since you're here, I've also got something that I think you'd like. My research suggests that if you go to the Rose Fields and seek out the sergeant, he may be able to give you some information that'll help you with your quest. Wow, that's amazing news! Just be careful out there. I've heard that the sergeant isn't exactly the friendliest guy out there. With that in mind, I left my base and headed in the direction of the Rose Fields. From day 32 to day 35, following the Desert Lord's instructions, I went out to the Rose Fields. There, I saw the sergeant sitting down and meditating among the roses. I didn't expect it'd be so easy to find him. I approached the sergeant and called out to him. Excuse me, Mr. Sergeant. I've been told you have some interesting information. Could we talk about it? But the sergeant didn't seem like he wanted to talk. Instead, he got up, ran towards me, and started fighting me with his fists. I didn't even have time to reason with him. All I could do was fight back against his onslaught of punches. After I survived for long enough, the sergeant relaxed. He'd had his fun. Nice skills, kid. Sorry, what can I say? I like a good fight. What information did you want? I've been told you know a lot about Shogun Skull. I'm trying to defeat him. Huh. Shogun Skull. I fought against his army back in the day. I was involved in a lot of those battles. What is it you want to know about him? I want to know what the Warden Ninjas had to do with his rise to power. And I want to know why he wants us all destroyed now. That much is simple. As part of Shogun Skull's takeover plans, he needed to destroy the leaders and guardians of the free people to demoralize them and break their spirits. While his armies fought their armies, he needed an elite group of assassins to take out the high-value targets. That's where the Warden Ninjas came in. They are excellent assassins, and with their stealth skills, they could sneak in and get the job done. And they did their job very, very well. But once their job was done and Shogun Skull was in power, he knew that if the Warden Ninjas could help him into power, they might also be able to topple his throne. So he sent out his armies of Dread Ghouls and Brigands to destroy every Warden Ninja. You, kid, are probably the last one left. From day 36 to day 39, I returned to my base. Knowing that I was public enemy number one for Shogun Skull made me realize I could really do with some better armor, so I asked Polly for ideas. I think the Shogun has a base in the tropical rainforest where you might be able to find some diamonds. Diamond armor and a diamond katana would be a huge help for you. Excellent idea, Polly. I'll go there now. I didn't waste any time getting to the tropical rainforest and beginning my search for the enemy base. On the way there, I ran into an air elemental that lives in the forest. Excuse me, kind sir. I have a quest I need help with. Some nasty dead worms have invaded my beautiful rainforest. If you see them, do me a kindness and perform a little pest control, would you? Of course. I'll definitely get rid of those dead worms if I see them. I kept searching until I struck gold. Well, not actual gold. I found the enemy base, guarded by a pair of dread ghouls, and it was time to fight my way inside. From day 40 to day 43, the fight began, first with the Dread Ghouls. That was an extremely quick battle. I pulled out my throwing axes and threw one at each of them, defeating them instantly. Then I ran into the base, ready for the real fight to begin. And it would definitely be a real fight, because the Armored Vindicator was in there, waiting for me. 
Finally, I can finish what I started and destroy you, Zozo. At least this time, you won't run away like a sad little coward like you did before. No, this time, I really am going to fight you with all I've got. The armored Vindicator charged at me. I unleashed the sonic boom, stunning him. While he was stunned, I finished him off with my powerful ninja swing. I told you I'd beat you, armored Vindicator. I'm a warden ninja of my word. With him gone, I searched around the room until I found a chest. Just like Polly the Pink Pixie had told me, there were diamonds inside. Looks like my armor and weapons are about to level up. From day 44 to day 49, I crafted my diamonds into a powerful diamond katana and even had some diamonds left over to make a full set of diamond armor. I'd hate to have to go against me using this bad boy. After that, I left the base with my new diamond katana in hand, looking forward to finding something to use it on. And as luck would have it, I happened upon a small gang of vicious dead worms. Hey, the air elemental told me to get rid of these. Time to kill two worms with one sword. Okay, a few more than two. With my diamond katana, I defeated all the dead worms with ease and destroyed the infestation. Not even the shogun himself could deny I was stronger than ever now. From day 50 to day 53, as I traveled further through the tropical rainforest, I came upon a cave that I sensed an unusual amount of power coming out of. This must have something to do with Shogun's skull. I should go investigate, just in case. But when I was about to enter the cave, a magical genie came floating out of it. Halt, traveler. You are approaching the cave of the fire elemental. If you wish to enter, then you need to answer my riddle. I remembered that the Fire Elemental was the second of the elite warriors working for Shogun's Skull. I needed to answer the riddle, get in there, and defeat him. Okay, what's your riddle? I belong to you, but your friends use me more often. What am I? It was a challenging one. What do you think? Do you know the answer to the riddle? If you do, let me know down in the comments to help me out. Hmm, can you repeat the riddle? I belong to you, but your friends use me more often. What am I? That's tough. Hmm. <gasps> Wait, I've got it! You're my name! It belongs to me, but my friends use it more often when they talk to me. Correct. You may pass through. I entered the cave and saw the fire elemental waiting for me. He sent a few fire blasts my way, which I was luckily able to dodge. I fired a sonic boom at the fire elemental, then ran in with my diamond katana. With a few quick, decisive swipes, the fire elemental was destroyed. Two of Shogun Skull's three warriors were destroyed, and I was ready to level up. I got bigger, stronger, and my hearts grew to 40. I had also developed ninja speed, making me faster than ever before. I'm on the path to becoming a true ninja. I bet the Shogun is quivering in his boots. From day 54 to day 57, I was using my new ninja speed to zip through the forest. My powers were growing, but I needed some kind of way to hone my skills. Why can't I find the Ninja Master Mentor? I've searched everywhere and I still can't find him. Unless I've already found him and didn't even know. That's when it hit me. It was right under my nose from the very beginning. The nomad in his little hut in the ebony forest. The nomad who'd known a suspicious amount about what was going on in the world. I need to go back to the Nomad right now! So I sped right back to the small hut in the forest, only to see the Nomad outside again, waiting for me! I wondered when you'd be back, Zozo. Glad you finally figured it all out. So, are you ready to begin your training? From day 58 to day 62, the Nomad Master began his training. He said there would be three lessons. The first would be cutting down trees to practice my sword swings and to help me focus. If you can slice through a tree, then no enemy should pose a challenge to you. Next, he made me practice sword fighting with him. He was a tough opponent, but I could feel myself getting better as the sparring went on. And for the third lesson, he released a giant mummy scorpion and got it to chase me around until I finally built up the courage to defeat it with my diamond katana. Afterwards, I returned to the Nomad Master's hut. You have done well, Zozo, and proven you are worthy. I'll teach you my special technique, Ultimate Slash. Much stronger than a regular slash. Use it wisely. Thank you, Master. I will use it with honor.
From day 63 to day 66, I returned to my base, only to see it under attack by a gang of dread ghouls straight from the Shogun's palace. Hey, get away from my base! I pulled out my diamond katana and ran in, taking them out with my ninja speed and ultimate slashes. It didn't take long for me to defeat them all, and that's when the Desert Lord ran up to me. Zozo, we need your help! Some of those dread ghouls kidnapped Polly, the pink pixie. We need to get her back. Oh no, where did they take her? Out into the ebony forest. You need to get after them, quickly. Don't worry, Desert Lord, I'm on it. From day 67 to day 70, I used my ninja speed to run back through the ebony forest, looking for the dread ghouls that kidnapped Polly. It didn't take long for me to find them. Don't worry, Polly, I'm coming to save you. Thanks to all my training, these dread ghouls weren't a challenge for me. I slashed through them with my diamond katana until only me and Polly remained. That was amazing, Zozo, thank you. You saved my life from all those dread ghouls. I'm so sorry for ever letting you get kidnapped in the first place, Polly. Let's go back to the base. We returned to the base, and I decided that after all this, I needed to put in an extra line of defense, building a defensive wall around the base's entrance. Better safe than sorry. I can't risk another attack while I'm away like that again. From day 71 to day 74, I wasn't sure where to go next. I knew that I needed to defeat the Crimson Wizard before I could take on Shogun Skull himself, but I wasn't sure where to find him. So instead, I decided to go back to one of the deadliest enemies I'd left behind before. With my new skills and my diamond katana, I returned to the underground cavern where I'd faced the Hydra before. As soon as I entered the cave, I blasted him with a powerful sonic boom, momentarily stunning him, and ran in with my ninja speed, hitting him with ultimate slash again and again, faster than he could even regenerate from it. Thankfully for both of us, the Hydra tapped out and agreed to tell me anything I wanted to know. You're looking for the Crimson Wizard, right? No worries, I know exactly where he is. You just need to go to the Weeping Witch Forest. He's guarded by some brigands. Just go after him and leave me alone, please. I left the Hydra to his own devices and ran off. I had a Crimson Wizard to defeat. From day 75 to day 78, I followed the advice given to me by the Hydra and traveled all the way to the Weeping Witch Forest. A place like this is a perfect hideout for an evil wizard. Why didn't I think of this sooner? I continued to go further in until I fell down a hill and found myself surrounded by brigands, just like the Hydra told me. You wandered right into our trap, Zozo. There's no way you're ever gonna escape us here. I don't wanna escape, brigand. You and your bosses are the ones I've come here for. With my ninja speed and my diamond katana, I zipped from brigand to brigand, taking out each one with a single strike. Once they were down, all that was left to do was hunt down the Crimson Wizard. But the last thing I expected was for him to come to me instead. The Crimson Wizard appeared right in front of me and fired an energy blast that took out a number of my hearts. It was clear that he was the strongest of the Shogun Skull's three elite warriors. This is hardly even a challenge. Why don't you show me your good time, Zozo? Have you come this far just to perish? How's this for a good time? While the Crimson Wizard was distracted by his own gloating, I ran in and struck him with my katana, hitting him so hard and fast, he was immediately destroyed. Probably should have fully defeated me before you started bragging, Crimson Wizard. And this means that I've defeated all three of the Elite Warriors. And that clearly meant something because I leveled up into my strongest form yet with 60 hearts. It's time to finally defeat Shogun Skull. From day 79 to day 84, I returned to my base to give Polly the Pink Pixie and the Desert Lord the good news. They looked amazed at my size and abilities. This is incredible, Zozo. It's amazing to see how far you've come, Zozo. We're so proud of you. Thanks, guys. I think I'm ready to defeat Shogun Skull. Do you have any idea where I can find the Shogun's palace? I can help you there, Zozo. I went there once. It's deep in the Zelkova forest, and I can lead you there. Thank you, Desert Lord. Let's go! From day 85 to day 89, the Desert Lord and I traveled to the Far East into the Zelkova forest. We stopped for a moment for one last discussion. Desert Lord, it'll be too dangerous from here. I'll go alone. Are you sure, Zozo? I don't want you to get hurt. It's okay. I've been training for almost 100 days. I believe I can do this. Okay, Zozo. I wish you luck. 
And with that, the Desert Lord and I went our separate ways. From day 90 to day 94, I traveled deeper into the Zelkova forest, searching for the Shogun's palace. It's gotta be around here somewhere. Where could Shogun's skull be hiding? Right behind you. I turned around just in time to see Shogun Skull standing right behind me. Before I could fight back, he hit me and everything went black. When I woke up again, I was in the Badlands, miles away from where I was supposed to be, with Osiris standing right in front of me. You're not who I wanted to fight, but I guess you'll have to do. I still had my Diamond Katana, thankfully, and used Ultimate Slash on Osiris. He wasn't that hard to defeat, but knowing how far I was behind on my plans to defeat Shogun Skull now, I felt terrible. All I could do was make my way back to my base and figure out a new plan. This is gonna be a long week. From day 95 to day 97, I continued making my way back through the Badlands, frustrated that Shogun Skull and his minions had put me so far behind schedule. And speak of the devil, a gang of dread ghouls emerged from behind some rocks. It's over, Zozo. We're going to be the ones to take you down. Better mobs have tried and failed. I don't fancy your chances. I didn't have much time to waste on these guys, so I hit them with a sonic boom, then finished the rest of them off with a diamond katana. Shogun Skull, your end is near. On day 98, I returned to my base, exhausted from all the setbacks that had slowed me down and gotten in my way. I returned to find Polly the Pink Pixie and the Desert Lord waiting outside and looking equally sad for me. I'm so sorry that all of this happened, Zozo. You've been facing the impossible. Perhaps we put too much pressure on you. Maybe the Desert Lord is right, Zozo. It took a whole organization of Warden Ninjas to deliver Shogun's skull into power. Maybe it was just wishful thinking to believe that one Warden Ninja would be enough to overthrow him. Guys, we can't afford to think like that. We need hope if we were ever going to win this thing. Shogun Skull is throwing everything at us, and that's because he's scared. Because he knows, deep down, that I can defeat him. So let's keep pushing and prove that evil jerk right. That seemed to pep them both back up. And if you want to support our adventures and see more, be sure to hit like and subscribe and ring the bell so you never miss another Zozo video. Zozo, if you believe it's truly time for the final battle, I'll lead you to the Shogun's palace again. Let's bring his reign of terror to an end, once and for all. That's what I'm talking about. Lead the way, Desert Lord. I'm ready to do this. On day 99, following the Desert Lord through the Zelkova forest, I reached the Shogun's palace where we bid farewell. Of course, Shogun's skull was never going to let me just waltz in. The gates opened, and first, he sent out a band of brigands to attack me. We've been promised a real good payday if we can destroy you, Zozo. That's money you'll never get to spend. I ran in with my diamond katana, supported by my now iron willpower. I'd never let these brigands defeat me. I kept fighting until not a single one of them was left, and only I was standing. Who's next, Shogun Skull? I can take anyone you throw at me. But the next group of mobs didn't come from the palace. They snuck up behind me. It was a gang of silent assassins. They were much tougher than the brigands, but with my expert diamond katana skills, I was able to still defeat them all. By this point, I was getting tired, but I still had the will to fight. Is that all you got, Shogun? The gates opened again and out stepped a huge warrior. It was the bandit warlord, the leader of the brigands who'd helped the Shogun rise to power all those years ago. Your army, Zozo. You've destroyed so many of my brigands. Do you have any idea how much effort it will take to replace them all? For that, I've decided I'm going to destroy you myself. Not if I have anything to say about it. I unleashed my sonic boom, blasting the bandit warlord right in the chest. But he tanked it. He was completely unharmed. Huh, <laughs> pathetic. That barely tickled. Do you really think such a feeble attempt would really defeat me, the mighty bandit chief, second only to the Shogun himself? This is going to be fun. Worried that this could be the end, I pulled out one of my axes and threw it directly at the bandit warlord. To my surprise, it destroyed him instantly. Oh, I guess he was just bragging. Huh. With his guard force taken care of, all that was left was to enter the palace and battle the Shogun himself. On day 100, I entered the Shogun's palace and found the man himself, Shogun Skull, waiting for me. 
Well done, Zozo. You've proven yourself and fought with honor. For that, I will give you the privilege of a warrior's death. You deserve little else. All that bluster can't disguise how scared you are, Shogun Skull. I know the truth. You never would have gotten to where you are without people like me. And what the Warden Ninja gives, the Warden Ninja can take away. That's the true way of the ninja. How arrogant, Zozo. Do you really believe you can take away this? Shogun Skull began to transform into an even larger, more dangerous version of himself. The strongest I'd ever seen him. No more talking, Zozo. It ends now. Well, at least we can agree on that. The battle began. The two of us clashed katanas. We seemed equally matched in skill, but because of his dark magic, Shogun's skull was bigger and stronger. For a moment, I was worried it was over for me, when suddenly my warrior spirit kicked back in, and I found the will to fight again, and I also miraculously regained all of my health. I fought harder than I ever had before, hitting Shogun Skull again, and again, and again, until he was almost defeated. I'd never seen him look so weak and helpless. I charged up all of my strength, and with a single blast of my sonic boom, Shogun Skull was destroyed, and peace restored to the land once more. I love a happy ending. On day one, I spawned in as a zombie warden. Whoa, I guess I must be a warden who was revived into a zombie. What are the chances? I only had six hearts to start with, probably because I had just been brought back. I'll bet I can become a lot stronger than this. It looks like I already had the physical strength of a zombie and the senses of a warden. I could also perform a wicked sonic boom. Even after becoming a zombie, I've still got it. I realized that I was inside of some musty old tomb. There was a necromancer nearby who seemed to be jumping for joy. Yes, I have done it! After so many tries, I have turned a warden into a zombie! Now my creation will serve me and do my bidding! Whoa there, guy! I just got here! Don't I get to choose whether or not I do your bidding? Hmm? Free will? I guess I need to use a stronger control spell! The necromancer started slinging magic at me. It was probably the control spell he mentioned. I didn't want to be controlled, so I started to run away. I ran off into a hallway of the tomb and found cover against the necromancer's spells. He was not happy about that. You will serve me. Get him, Reaper. An undead Reaper was summoned and ran towards me, chasing me. But I found a hole in the wall and squeezed through. On the other side were a bunch of coffins and gravestones. I guess I could rest here since I'm a zombie. I'll find a way out of this place tomorrow so I can stay free. On day two, I took my first steps towards freedom and entered a forest inside of a cave. I thought that the way to the surface must have been somewhere around here. I could see perfectly in the darkness because of my warden senses, so I punched one of the trees and gathered enough wood to make a wooden axe and pickaxe. This forest was way bigger than I expected. I realized that I had no idea how to get to the surface from here, but I was determined to keep exploring this place until I did. I soon found out that I wasn't alone. There was some kind of warrior ghost floating around near a mysterious monument which was emitting a strong light. Greetings! You must be another one of that necromancer's pawns. Or at least you were. I'm nobody's pawn. The name is Zozo, and I'm looking for a way out of this tomb so I can start a new life on the outside. You're lucky you can move around so freely. I am ghostbound to this monument, but my spirit is too strong to be controlled by that necromancer. So he tried to make you his servant too? Yes, but be warned, the necromancer was not the most evil thing in this tomb. There is a more ancient and deadly force living deep below, and it too may try to keep you here. Good to know. Thank you for the heads up. I continued to explore the forest and ran into some cave-dwelling mooses. It was honestly a good thing because I had gotten very hungry. I'm eating mooses tonight. Or wait, is the plural moose or mooses? Or is it meese? Whatever it was, the raw moose ribs I got from the fight tasted great. It seems like most zombies have got an all-meat diet. On day three, I found a wide open cavern where I could start building an underground base. I can't be much of a warden without a place to ward. I mined some stones so that I could build a small shelter for myself. With the material situation sorted for now, I started to build myself a temporary tent-like base. 
I would need to get more materials before I could make a high quality base, but this would do for now. I heard a sound behind me, and my keen warden senses told me that it was a soul eater. I fired off a sonic boom to tell it not to mess with me, but it seemed to only make it matter. The soul eater ran towards me and attacked. You're not getting my soul today. I fought back with my zombie strength. The Soul Eater was a tough enemy, but my sonic boom had weakened it before we got into melee range, so I was able to win the fight. I felt the souls that the Soul Eater had collected enter me and began to feel my power grow. My number of hearts doubled to 12, and I even became slightly larger. Later, with the rest of the wood I gathered, I built a fence around my shelter. On days four to five, I searched the forest cavern for more materials to use for my base and to protect myself. I wonder if the entrance of the tomb has any materials that I might have missed. Even though it was risky, I went back in the direction of the tomb. When I arrived at the entrance, I found that the necromancer was there waiting for me. You again! I already told you that I won't be controlled. I am a free zombie! You have no idea what is coming for you, Zozo. The Demon King promised me great rewards if I could build an undead legion for his army. The Demon King? Who is that? He has waited countless eons to make his return. This tomb was where the ancient heroes of the past sealed him away. But now that he has come back, the world will belong to him. And I will do my part to ensure that. The Necromancer cast another confusion spell, but I countered it with a perfectly timed sonic boom that stopped it in midair. Nice try, but I won't work for you, and I won't work for the Demon King. I blocked another confusion spell with my sonic boom and drew my sword. I ran toward the Necromancer and struck him down. You foolish zombie! You could have been on the winning side, but now you will pay the price for being a traitor! He crumbled into dust, leaving nothing behind. On day six to eight, I began digging into the walls of the cavern so that I could find a way towards the outside. My brand new tunnel quickly turned into a mine and I was able to gather a ton of stone. I built myself a full set of stone armor. While I was at it, I also upgraded my tools to stone. It was just in time because a pack of kobolds showed up right after to attack my base and try to steal my materials. I fired a sonic boom which startled them and then I hacked and slashed with my stone sword until I took down the entire group. I was starting to get the hang of the zombie warden fighting style but I knew I'd be able to get even stronger. These upgrades are only the beginning. On days 9 to 10, I was in my mind when my stone pickaxe started breaking through netherrack. A few minutes later, I broke out of the wall and onto the surface. But the surface world was not how I imagined it. It was overrun with monsters. The entire landscape was filled with lava. Is this the work of the Demon King? If I was going to survive out here on my own, I was going to need some better materials. I looked around the dark landscape to see if I could find any. That's when I ran into the Demon King himself. It is so good to be free. Or should I say bad to be free? Bad for you, that is. You must be the Demon King. I'm the zombie warden of the tomb. Call me Zozo. So you're the one who defeated that necromancer and made me lose my undead army. No matter. I never needed them anyway. I will conquer the world without the undead. He swiped his sword at me faster than I could let out a sonic boom. That one blow took out a lot of my health and I could tell right then and there that the Demon King was too strong for me to defeat. What's the matter, Zozo? Are you scared? Yeah, a little. That's why I'm getting out of here. I turned and ran back towards my underground base. For some reason, the Demon King didn't choose to follow me. Why would I return to the tomb I was sealed in? I have the whole world to destroy now. When I arrived back at the hillside, I was surprised to see a familiar enemy. It was the Reaper that the Necromancer had summoned to fight me. Back for more, Reaper? Not at all. I came to thank you for setting me free from that spellcaster's control. Oh, I guess we're cool then. We're more than cool. I saw the way you stood up to the Demon King. Perhaps we can work together and take him down. But I ran away. You ran away a second more than anyone else. Which means you're braver than you know. Besides, if we want to keep our freedom, we'll have to face him eventually. He'll send another necromancer to control us before long. Point taken. I guess it's you and me, Reaper. Please, call me Grimsley.
On days 11 to 12, I invited Grimsley back to my base and began to build another structure to house him. While I was at it, I popped my tent back up, then decided that wasn't enough. So I turned my tent into a watchtower. That way, I could observe what was happening on the surface while I was in my base. Yes. I spent some time out in the surface world gathering materials to craft new items. The surface world had a lot of warped stems, and I made sure to get as much as I could. I then proceeded to explore the area some more. I mean, who knows what I might find here? While I was exploring, I spotted a mob. It was headed my way, so I got ready for a fight. I blasted the approaching lava monster with my sonic boom, but it didn't do much damage. My stone weapons also had no effect on the creature at all. Oh no, I'm too weak. I need to get a better weapon and come back. I disappeared into the forest and retreated away from the battlefield. Using some of my leftover stone, I crafted myself a brand new mace for combat. It was a slow weapon, but it had a lot of power, and that suited me just fine. The next time I saw that lava monster, I took him down in one hit. Hooray! Now this is a weapon I can use! I decided not to stop there. The mace was great, but I could use a durable set of armor to match. Some iron tools wouldn't hurt either. I went back to my personal mineshaft and began to dig for iron. It didn't take me too long to find enough to improve my tools and armor level. I smelted the iron down and crafted myself a full set of iron armor and tools. On days 13 to 15, the ghost of the ancient warrior called me to his side and told me the tale of the Demon King. 100 years ago, the world was under attack by a Demon King and his army of demons and monsters. The big evil guy had succeeded in uniting the demons, the undead mobs, and the two-headed ogre tribe into an unstoppable fighting force. The villagers and animals tried to stand against the Demon King, but they were no match. It seemed that all hope was lost, until one day, the legendary heroes appeared. I was one of them. Together, myself and my companions used our legendary weapons to strike deadly blows on the Demon King. Weakening him enough for our cleric to trap him inside of the tomb, we now stand inside. It seems as though the seal held for exactly 100 years before being broken. I can only imagine that this is because there were no heroes powerful enough to use that spell in the modern day. So you're saying that even you and the other legendary heroes couldn't defeat the Demon King back then? And then the only way was to seal him, even though it didn't last? It's better than letting him rampage around and do whatever he wants. I don't know. Even if there was somebody who could cast the sealing spell these days, would it even matter? It's like putting a band-aid on a broken sword. I'm sorry, but it doesn't sound like there is anything that can be done. On days 16 to 19, I couldn't find Grimsley anywhere in the base, even in the house I built for him. Grimsley wouldn't just leave without telling me. I better look for him. It was a good thing I was part warden, because wardens are really good at finding things. I wandered out farther than I ever had before, to a hill with dark grass and strange ruins on top of it. I spotted Grimsley, but he wasn't alone. There was another mob there, and it looked like it was wearing a magic robe. Oh no, another necromancer has tried to capture Grimsley. I got closer, and I saw that I was correct. The cloaked figure had him enclosed in a ritual circle, and Grimsley was trapped. Zozo, is that you? Help me! Don't worry, Grimsley, I'll save you! I fired a sonic boom, which disrupted the necromancer's chanting. He got angry and fired some evil bolts at me. I circled around the hill, using the ruins as cover. I managed to catch him by surprise and wind up an overhead smash with my mace. See you later! The magic circle collapsed when the caster was defeated and Grimsley was set free. Well done, Zozo. I thought I was going to be controlled again for sure. Don't worry, buddy. I gotcha. Neither of us will ever be controlled again. This time, the Demon King won't have the help of the undead. We'll be fighting against him. That's the spirit. Or should I say, we're the spirits. Inspired by Grimsley's words, I felt myself begin to grow and change. My number of hearts increased to 20, and I also gained increased melee damage. Zombierific! It was just in time, too, because we were joined by a troop of knights. Their leader wore ice armor. Freeze, undead servants of the Demon King. I, Sir Frost, will put you on ice. It's cool. We don't actually work for the Demon King, and we're going to make sure no other undead has to either. Oh, pardon the misunderstanding then. I'll be off to continue facing his forces and searching for the legendary blade of demon sealing. Wait, 
A blade like that exists? We certainly hope so. It is said to contain the magic of the cleric who sealed him the first time. Well, if you need any help, you know who to call. Me, Zozo. On days 20 to 22, I went back to the base only to find it overrun with giant centipedes. All right, you bugs, prepare to get squashed. They were quick, but not very tough. So I used my sword instead of my mace. I figured this place needed a statue. One that would show those knights that allies could be found here, in the remnants of the Demon King's tomb. It would have to be brave and mighty, not to mention cool. Sir Frost will be so impressed that he'll make me his second in command. Plus, he's probably the modern day descendant of one of those legendary heroes who beat the Demon King. That's how it usually works. I needed white and blue for the statue to really look like him, so I went to gather some dolomite and lapis. I managed to mine quite a bit of the materials I needed and went back to the base. With access to those materials, I could start working on the statue. It was really starting to come together and look like a base of something great. What do you think it'll be? While you're leaving a comment on what you think it'll be, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you can see more of my amazing adventures. On days 23 to 26, the kobolds returned in even greater numbers. This time, they had some arranged weapons on them too. I guess kobolds were craftier than I thought. Fortunately, my melee damage had gotten stronger and I could easily deal with them. One of the kobolds I defeated dropped a bow and a quiver full of poison-tipped arrows. Wow. This would make a good backup ranged weapon for my sonic boom. Since there were no necromancers to cast spells on me, I took a trip down into the depths of the tomb. It looked like they had been taken over by a den of slimes and spiders, and they were in the middle of a territory struggle. Am I interrupting something? I cleared out the vermin and gathered up their webs and slime balls. Once I returned to the base, I was able to craft those materials into some leaves. After I was done with that, I spotted another kobold jumping in front of my base and ran down to face it. Oh, hey, there's still another kobold back here. Back for another fight. No way, I wanna join you guys. The other kobolds were always mean to me. Oh, I didn't know. Don't worry, buddy, I gotcha. I built a new house for the kobold and set him up with a workshop to make new weapons and gizmos. Let me make it up to you by building some traps around the base for you. On days 27 to 31, I returned to the forest and talked to the ancient warrior about the legendary blade that Sir Frost mentioned. Apparently, this blade can seal the Demon King away again. Does that sound like something that the other legendary warriors might have done? It is possible that the cleric planned ahead and sealed one more spell into the legendary weapon. But I've been trapped here the whole time as a guardian ghost, so I have no idea what happened in those hundred years. I suppose I'll have to go looking and see what the world is like out there. The Demon King is most likely sending his minions to destroy whatever is left of the legendary hero's descendants. If you can find them first, one of them probably knows how to find the legendary blade. Well then, there's no time to waste. Thanks, Ancient Warrior. I'm out of here. I journeyed out into the wilderness in search of the legacy that the legendary heroes left behind. I came upon a bridge over a deep ravine, which was guarded by a two-headed giant. Just try to get past us. You won't. Watch me. I shot a poison-tipped arrow into the giant and watched as their health started to get chipped away. Why, you? The giant charged right into the path of my swinging mace. Kapow! The hit knocked them back, causing them to stumble over the side of the ravine. The two-headed giant fell all the way to the bottom, but didn't disappear. I quickly ran across the bridge before they found a way back up. On days 32 to 35, I found a grove full of trees, and in it were a bunch of songbirds. Hello, traveler. What brings you to this peaceful place? My name is Zozo, and I'm here in search of a legendary blade that can seal the Demon King. Oh, the Blade of the Cleric. This place was created by one of the other legendary heroes, so we've heard of it, but we're not sure where it is. Darn it, this is still a very nice clearing. But wait, if it was made by the heroes, then... Just as I realized, the Demon King came rushing into the grove. He used his magic staff and destroyed half of the grove in one hit. Luckily, I'm here. Run away, birds. I'll distract him. The songbirds ran away just in time, as the Demon King was right next to me. We meet again, Zozo. This time I'll destroy you. It seemed like he meant it. He was immune to the poison of my arrows, and he closed in on me before I could use my sonic boom. Thinking quickly, I surprised him with my increased melee damage. Impressive, but it will take more than that to defeat me. I guess we'll find out next time. 
I ran off while the Demon King just stood there, laughing. But at least I lived to fight another day. Just as I got far enough away, I spotted one of the songbirds. I'm sorry about your home. We'll be able to find a new home. You saved us, and that's what matters. My base can be your new home. Oh, sweet. On days 36 to 39, I constructed an aviary where the birds could live as peacefully as they did back at the grove. Can you tell me anything else you know about the legendary heroes? There were four of them in total. The warrior, the cleric, the singer, and the ice knight. The singer was the one who made our grove, and I hear that the ice knight founded an order of brave warriors who dwell in the snowy north. That sounds like Sir Frost and his companions. I should go visit them. The good thing about the North is that it's very well protected. The Demon King will have to spend a lot of resources to claim it. If there's another place where his forces can be resisted, it would be there. Awesome! I should get prepared and make this alliance official. The undead can team up with the knights, and together we'll find the legendary blade. Then we'll show the Demon King who's really boss. But before I left to go explore the snowy North, I did a bit more on my statue. I felt inspired because I was reminded of Sir Frost. On days 40 to 43, another undead showed up at the base and I welcomed them into the ranks of the resistance. Hi, my name is Gabby Ghoul. Welcome to the team, Gabby. Thanks, I'm from the lower east side of the tomb and I know there are some really good materials behind a secret door. That sounds cool. Will you show us where the secret door is? Sure, since you asked so nicely. Gabby showed us the secret door in the Lower East Tomb, and sure enough, there was gold ore which could be used to craft some very valuable gold items. It was almost too good to be true, but it was true, and there was a warder there to make it a little less good. I did a sonic boom on the dangerous mob and performed a combo with my mace. It took a few more hits than most of the enemies I'd faced, but it went down just like the rest of them. Wow, there's a lot of useful stuff back here. I have some materials to give to the Kobold Trapsmith. I returned to the kobold and gave him all of the materials I collected. I'm sure he will make great use of them. On days 44 to 49, I traveled across the land until I reached the snowy north. If I were human, I'd probably have to wear a coat. Thank goodness I'm undead. The local mobs were completely different from the ones that I had encountered in the lands that the Demon King had ransacked. But just because they weren't working for the Demon King didn't mean they were friendly. A winged imp monster known as a Vex swooped from out of the sky and tried to take me down. That hurt. I guess it's time to get serious. I swung my mace at the creature, but it was too slow. It flew back up into the sky out of melee range. But that was a mistake on the mob's part because I used my sonic boom to drop it. I decided to travel deeper in, had noticed more of these things, and also that they were attacking a poor arctic fox. I drew my bow and arrow. I had the element of surprise, so I launched arrows into all of them. The vexes were poisoned and defeated. That's when a fox approached me, looking very relieved. Oh, that was helpful, thank you. That's what I do, I help people. Are you part of the Ice Knight Order? I've been looking for them. So have I, I need their help with finding a legendary blade. The one that can seal the Demon King back? So it does exist. At least my village wasn't attacked for nothing. The Demon King's forces are there right now, looking for it. I need the knights to come and save us. I guess we've got the same goal. Let's see what we can do together. On days 50 to 53, the fox and I traveled further into the snowing north, trying to avoid the prying eyes of the vexes. Maybe if we look around, we'll find someone who can give you a bit more information about the blade of the cleric. There are a lot of people who hate the Demon King, so they'll probably be willing to help out. But the one person I didn't want to see was the multi-headed giant. He'd finally tracked me down, and he wanted some payback. Is this a friend of yours, Zozo? Yeah, something like that. I rushed in and unleashed my sonic boom, but he dodged the sonic boom and charged at me. I guess two heads are finally looking better than one. But I was stronger than I was all those days ago, and I didn't need only my sonic boom to fight my enemies. As the giant got closer, I pulled out my mace and jumped into the air. One strike of my mace to the giant's multiple heads, and he was defeated. That was amazing. You're a real hero, Zozo. I'm just a zombie warden doing his best. As Fox and I continued to explore, we found a mutant snow golem camping. 
Hey, Mr. Snow Golem, I'm Zozo, and I'm looking for the Sword of the Cleric. Do you know where I can find it? Sorry to burst your bubble, kid, but it doesn't work that way. Huh? You don't just find the Sword of the Cleric. Legends say that when you reveal yourself to be worthy, only then will the sword find its way to you. Oh, so I'm not a real hero yet? Uh, you don't have the sword, so probably not. But you seem like a good kid. Take this protection enchantment. It'll help you on your quest. Thanks, Mr. Snow Golem. I appreciate it. On days 54 to 57, I made the long and hard journey back across the map, then went underground to my base. I decided to apply the protection enchantment to my chest plate so I'd be able to withstand more powerful attacks easier. Yes. Afterwards, I noticed that the kobold installed some traps, a lava chest trap, a diamond door trap, and a pit trap. Hopefully these will never have to come in handy, but good to have them, just in case. Just then, Grimsley approached me with an important task. Zozo, thank goodness you're here. Gabby Ghoul has gotten sick. I fear that it's some kind of hex caused by the Demon King. I can make a healing potion to help her, but I need you to collect some apples from the warped forest. It's a vital ingredient. Don't worry, Grimsley. I'll be right on it. You stay here and tend to Gabby. I quickly went to the overworld and began exploring the warped forest until I happened upon some apples. I collected as many as I could, wanting to make sure there was enough for Gabby's healing potions. I went back to the underground base and gave Grimsley the apples. This is perfect, Zozo. I have even more than I need. Here, take a few of these spare health potions. You never know when they might come in handy. On days 58 to 62, I decided to take a load off and work on the statue after a pretty stressful week. Everyone needs a little relaxation time. Can you guess what it is yet? But just as I was about to continue my statue build, I noticed that a gang of demonic reavers working for the Demon King suddenly started attacking my base. Leave it to a guy called the Demon King to never fight fair. But I had an ace in the hole. As the reavers tried to ransack my base, they activated the different traps. A few fell into the lava pit, some more fell from my pit trap, and one of them even fell from my diamond ore trap. And even more were taken out by my sonic booms. I'll take on as many reavers as the Demon King can send at me. But I wasn't prepared for a sneak attack from behind from Grimsley, the Reaper, which knocked me down. Grimsley, how could you? I thought we were friends. I'm so sorry, Zozo. We are friends. But the Demon King somehow reactivated the Necromancer's control spell. I'm not in control of my own body. He is. Grimsley, you have to fight it. I promise I'll help free you. I'm worried you're already too late, Zozo. Just promise me you'll stay safe and don't follow me. And with that, the mind-controlled Grimsley ran off. On day 63 to day 66, I took one of the healing potions that Grimsley made for me and chased him out of the base. Looks like he's headed for the warped forest. I need to chase him and snap him out of this funk. I followed him until I caught up with him in the darkness of the forest. It was just me and Grimsley facing off. Zozo, I told you not to follow me. It was a trap from the Demon King all along. That's when even more Reavers came out of the forest to battle me. It looked like more than I could even take on. Oh. Grimsley, I need you to help me. I can't help you, Zozo. I'm not in control. You have to fight, Grimsley. You're not just a servant of the Necromancer or the Demon King. You're your own person. I could see that Grimsley was struggling to regain control, and eventually, Grimsley snapped out of it. You're right, Zozo. I am my own person. Now let's show these Reavers that we mean business. Grimsley and I fought off the Reavers together. Between the two of us, those servants of evil stood no chance. Thank you for never giving up on me, Zozo. I'll never give up on a friend. And as it turns out, when the Demon King invaded my mind, I also invaded his. I got a vision of a cave deep in the basalt deltas. We might be able to find something useful there. On day 67 to 70, Grimsley and I decided we'd make our way to the Basalt Deltas cave together and take the fight to the Demon King. Do you think the Blade of the Cleric is in there, Grimsley? Only if you're worthy. And look, that might be a good way to prove yourself. Grimsley was gesturing to a huge, scary Wendigo that was patrolling the outside of the cave. He must have been another demonic servant of the Demon King. I'll go in first. Follow my lead. I ran towards the Wendigo and unleashed a sonic boom. It was more formidable than anything I'd ever faced before. Thankfully, I still had my mace. I pulled it out and hit the Wendigo several times as it roared and shrieked, but the attacks only made it angrier. Then the Wendigo started fighting back. 
Every time it hit or bit me, it was knocking off heart after heart. It was terrifying. There was nothing I could do to stop it. I saw my life flashing before my eyes when suddenly Grimsley stormed in to save me. Leave my friend alone, Wendigo, or you're gonna learn exactly why you should fear the Reaper. Grimsley attacked. I don't know if he hurt the Wendigo, but he spooked it enough to finally run it off. You really saved me there, Grimsley. Thank you. Just repaying my debt, Zozo. Now let's take a look inside the cave. On day 71 to day 74, we entered the cave, hoping to find the Blade of the Cleric waiting for me. But no, the cave was empty and I was devastated. I guess I'm still not worthy. It's okay, Zozo. I'm sure we'll be able to find it. We just need to believe in ourselves. We better start believing harder, because if we don't, then the Demon King is gonna rise to full power. And without the Blade of the Cleric, there'll be nothing we can do to stop him. On day 75 to day 78, I returned to my base and decided it was time to upgrade my mace since it was about to break. So I did just that and crafted a new mace. Then I decided to supercharge it and applied the sharpness enchantment on it to improve its hitting power. Nobody will want to mess with me now. But that was wrong because the Wendigo who'd gotten away in the Badlands suddenly appeared and he was here for me. Unlike the Reavers, he wasn't tricked by any of the traps. He had my scent and he was coming straight for me with his teeth and claws ready. But this time though, I had my upgraded mace and I was ready to fight back. The Wendigo squared up and I hit him back. And after that hit, he didn't get back up. Because the Wendigo was so powerful, defeating him gave me a lot of XP, causing me to get bigger, stronger, and finally reach 30 hearts. I was one of the most powerful zombie wardens in the world. I was even starting to look more like an actual warden and became pretty buff. This is my coolest upgrade yet. That's when I had a vision. I needed to return to the snowy north. Something would be waiting for me there. Something I needed if I wanted to defeat the Demon King. So of course, there was no time to waste. On day 79 to day 84, I traveled into the snowy north until I found a fortress that looked like something out of my vision. And as it turned out, it was this fortress that was manned by Sir Frost and his knights, just who I wanted to see. I went to Sir Frost's planning room, where we began to discuss the thing on both of our minds, the Demon King. I've spent my entire life preparing to confront the Demon King if he ever rose again. And in all that time, all that responsibility, I feel I've learned so little. All I know is that he'll likely reach his greatest power soon. Then we should probably stick together. He'll want to get rid of all of us as part of his rise to power, but that'll be harder if we're working with each other. Come back to my base. We'll be safe there, Sir Frost. Hmm, you make a good point, Zozo. I'll prepare my things. We'll head off shortly. On day 85 to day 89, I returned to my base to check on Gabby Ghoul, who had started living inside of my statue, and ask her how she was recovering from the hex that the Demon King had put on her. I'm feeling a lot better now, Jojo. Thank you. And there's something I should tell you. I've been having visions lately. The Demon King, I know he's hiding somewhere with blue trees. Does that mean anything to you? Blue trees? That has to be the warped forest! That's the only place that looks like that! Thank you, Gabby! I know where to find him now! On day 90 to day 94, I went into the mines and managed to get extremely lucky and mine my first set of diamonds! If I'm gonna face the Demon King, I need some extremely tough armor! I forged myself a full set of diamond armor, which would defend me against almost anything. And then I went about enchanting every piece of my armor just so that I would be as prepared as possible. Diamonds are a zombie warden's best friend. On day 95 to day 97, I finished the statue. It was the statue made in tribute to one of the coolest warriors I know, Sir Frost. He'd spent his whole life searching for ways to stop the Demon King and looking at his statue, I knew I'd be honored to spend my own life doing the same. The Demon King would fall and it would be because of me. On day 98, all the preparations had been made. The last thing I was able to do was talk to my friends I'd made who were staying at my base. First, I spoke to Grimsley. I believe you can do this, Zozo. With or without the blade of the cleric, you're a true hero and you will defeat this monstrous villain. Next, I spoke to Gabby Ghoul. You're brave and kind, Jojo, and that will serve you well against the Demon King. Never forget that. And of course, Sir Frost, the Ice Knight. Are you sure you want to do this alone, Zozo? I would happily fight by your side, if you so will it. 
Thank you, Sir Frost, but you've been fighting this fight a long time. Let me finish it for you. And if you want to help me, the best thing you can do is subscribe to Zozo and ring the bell to always be notified of the next adventure. On day 99, with everything said, I left the underground base and made my way deep into the horrors of the nether. The first stop was the Crimson Forest, the only way to the warped forest Gabby had mentioned, where the Demon King would be waiting. That's when I saw something crawling out of the ground. It was another warden, just like me, except he wasn't zombified. You worthless traitor! The Necromancer and the Demon King gave you everything, and yet you rebel! You make me sick, you undead freak! I'd rather be undead and free than alive and taking orders from the Demon King! The enemy warden tried to unleash a sonic boom on me, but I wasn't about to waste time on him when I had the biggest fish to fry! I unleashed my sonic boom, and the enemy warden was completely destroyed! Traitor! And with him out of the way, it was time to enter the warped forest and finally finish this thing! On day 100, I entered the warped forest and prepared myself for the fight of my own life. It wouldn't be easy. First, I had to deal with the Endermen. They kept teleporting around me, and it took both my mace and my mega sonic boom to take care of them. It doesn't matter how much you delay, I'm gonna take on your boss soon enough. I thought I'd need to keep searching for the Demon King, but instead, the Demon King came for me. He floated down towards me, ready to fight. You again? That little failed experiment that killed the necromancer. Are you truly foolish enough to think you can best me, the Demon King? And with that, he began to grow, becoming a far bigger and more powerful version of himself than I had ever seen. He had finally reached his full power. Even if I can't beat you, I'm still going to fight you, because what kind of person would I be if I didn't? A living one. The Demon King pulled out a powerful bow and started shooting me with it. I tried to dodge, but was quickly overwhelmed due to the sheer power of it. Weak! How disappointing! Destroying you will be an act of mercy! Just as I thought I'd be doomed, I noticed something had been added to my inventory. It was the Blade of the Cleric! My act of bravery had finally earned it! As soon as I equipped the blade, I saw myself growing, getting more powerful. I was bigger, stronger, and even had a mighty 50 heart! There would be no stopping me now! Okay, Demon King, are you ready for a real fight? With the blade of the cleric, I attacked the Demon King, striking him again and again, forcing him further back into the warped forest, weakening him, breaking him down. I could tell he was afraid. Zozo, wait! Clearly you're strong! How about we join forces? Imagine the power we could have together! Nice offer, but I think I'll stick with my friends, Demon King! With one last blast of my sonic boom, the Demon King was destroyed, and the world was saved! After that, I went back to the base happy to finally relax. On day one, I spawned into the red desert as Diamond Venom, the symbiote with major swag! Whoa, and I've started with 20 hearts? That must be because of my diamond heart skin. Even though I'm a baby venom, I'm one tough baby. But I didn't get to enjoy all this for long. Before I knew it, a bunch of heavily armored royal guards were running towards me. Yeah, he looks like one of the escapees. We need to get him back into containment before Agent Horace finds out he's here. Escapees? But I didn't escape. I'm Zozo, and I just spawned here. Oh, we've heard that one before, bub. Come with us, you sparkly symbiote, or we'll be forced to use extreme, uh, force. I really didn't want to get into a fight straight away, especially over a misunderstanding, so I ran as fast as my little diamond venom legs would carry me. Uh-oh, it looks like I might not be fast enough. As I was running, I suddenly noticed that more royal guards had me backed up into a corner. Symbiotes are powerful, but as just a baby and without any weapons, there was no way I could take all these guys on. Can't we just talk this out? I promise I won't misbehave. I think this is a huge misunderstanding. Don't worry, kid. We'll talk it out when we have you back in containment. Come along now. We don't want to hurt you if we don't have to. And with that, the gang of royal guards led me off to who knows where. This isn't turning out to be a very successful first day. On day two, the royal guards escorted me into what looked like a kind of small secret research lab in the middle of the desert. Welcome to Area 52, son. This is where we keep all the secret things for research and testing, and that includes you. 
But I don't even know what you guys think I did. That's for us to know, and you to probably never find out. Now get in this cell over here. We'll check your paperwork and deal with you later. They made me go into a cell where a huge, kind of intimidating redstone golem was waiting for me. Oh, shiny. What are you in for, Mac? Honestly, I don't even know. I feel like the right to a fair trial should have been given to us. They can't just lock us away like this. You're here to that, buddy. I'm Robbie. Robbie the redstone golem. You? I'm Zozo, and don't worry, Robbie. I'm gonna bust both of us out of here. But how? You see, one of the powers of the symbiote is super strength. Watch. With my powerful diamond fists, I busted down the wall of the cell leading to the outside. Yes. And before any of the royal guards could even notice, Robbie and I escaped out into the desert. That was amazing, Zozo. We should probably go our separate ways now, so that those goons can't catch us, but I hope we run into each other again. Same here, Robbie. Happy travels! And with that, we both ran off in different directions. On day three, I ran further into the desert, trying to put as much distance between myself and Area 52 as possible. I never want to have to go back there if I can avoid it. But as I was running away, my diamond venom stomach started to rumble. Oh no, this isn't good. Symbiotes are meat eaters, so I need to get my hands on some good protein as soon as possible. Lucky for me, there were some desert chickens waiting around, and they just looked too delicious for me to resist. I attacked them until I was left with some yummy raw chicken on my hands, which I ate with gusto. That's finger looking good. My hunger sated, I kept on walking until I ran into another lone figure in the desert. It was a warden. Hello there, Zozo. Wait, how do you know my name? I know a lot of things. Perks of the job. I'm Agent Warden. Nice to meet you. Agent? Oh no, you're with Area 52. You're gonna try to capture me. I used to be with them, but now I've gone rogue. Believe me, Zozo, we're on the same team. Come with me. I'll tell you everything you want to know. That was an offer too good to refuse, so I followed Agent Warden through the desert. From day four to day five, we arrived in an isolated base in the middle of the Black Forest, so deep and dark that nobody would ever find it unless they knew what they were looking for. Welcome to my secret base, Zozo. And I do mean secret. If you tell anyone about this, I'll be forced to destroy you. Noted. Jeez, this guy is intense. I heard that. No, you didn't. When we were inside, Agent Warden started telling me the whole horrible truth about what people were up to at Area 52. You were lucky to escape with your life, Zozo. They're monstrous people. They capture and experiment on everyone who's different, trying to take their special powers and use them for their own gain. I used to be part of their whole organization until I decided enough was enough. I needed to take them down, and over the next 100 days, you can help me take them down. After what they did to me and Robbie, I'm happy to lend a hand in taking these bad guys down. That's the spirit. But we can't be seen together, Zozo. If we are, there's too much of a risk we'll both get taken out. Take this stone sword, axe, and stone pickaxe. Go make your own secret base. We'll talk again soon. My instructions were clear. I took the sword, axe, and pickaxe and left, going deep into the black forest. I cut down some trees to make a clearing and mined some stone. Then I started building myself a basic base to spend the night, adding a nice furnished room and a bed to make myself feel safe from the mobs at night. I stood back to appreciate my small and proud base, and I was really pleased with my work. But then, I heard some royal guards coming towards the forest. There's that diamond venom! Get him! Stay away from my base, guys, or you're gonna find out that I'm really a lethal protector. They didn't listen. Instead, they charged in, and I used my super strength to beat the living stuffing out of them. That's what you get for messing with the diamond symbiote. And giving those royal guards a beatdown also gave me enough XP to level up, becoming bigger, stronger, and amazingly, having 50 hearts. And it looks like I can use my super strong symbiote arms to climb walls. I climbed the walls of my little base and sat on the roof, admiring the beautiful scenery of the Black Forest. From day six to day eight, I continued working on my base, adding some couches and bookshelves to my living area. When I took a break, none other than Robbie the Redstone Golem came walking through the forest right next to my base. I was happy to see him again. Robbie, I'm so happy to see you again. How are things going with you? Sadly, not good, man. I've been looking for a place to crash, but two of the villages I've tried to visit were already destroyed by the time I turned up. Destroyed? That's terrible. 
You said it, man. Something awful is going on out here. You need to stay safe. I'm gonna keep moving, and you should keep your eyes peeled. Stay safe out there, Robbie. Robbie left, and I was feeling more confused and afraid than ever. I needed to go and speak to Agent Warden as soon as possible. I ran to a secret base and told him everything that Robbie had told me. Then it seems the situation is already graver than I first thought. I have a few classified missions I need to perform myself, but in the meantime, head to the Sierra Valley and scope it out for any unusual activity. Together, we can stop the worst of this insidious plan before it even starts. Yes, sir. I'll do whatever I need to. That's a great attitude, Zozo. Do everything I say, and you'll go far. From day 9 to day 10, I did exactly what Agent Warden said and made my way out to the Sierra Valley to investigate. I just needed to find out if anything unusual was happening out here. Doesn't look like anything weird is happening out here. Oh, other than that. As it turned out, I hadn't noticed a huge armored piglin running towards me. Yeah, that's certainly pretty unusual. I began to battle the zombified armored piglin, but he was way tougher than the royal guards. Even with all my hearts and my diamond hard skin, he still had me on the ropes. Until suddenly, an armored pillager ran in and shot the zombified armored piglin with a bow and arrow. The second the arrow hit the creature, it seemingly got a lot weaker, and one more strike from my stone sword was enough to defeat it. That was awesome! You really saved my life there! Thank you, armored pillager! Don't mention it! I've never seen anyone like you! You really can fight! I've got a gang of cell swords who operate out here in the valley. We could use someone like you if you wanted to sign up. It'd be good work and good pay. It definitely sounds tempting, but I can't right now. I'm sorry. I'm on an incredibly important mission from Agent Warden. Who? It doesn't surprise me that you haven't heard of him. He's incredibly secretive. But I'll let him know we had this talk. Thank you again for the help. From day 11 to day 12, I returned to Agent Warden's secret base and told him all about what happened in the Sierra Valley with the piglin and the armored pillager who saved my life. But by the end of the story, Agent Warden didn't seem happy with me. You even told him my name? You can't do that, Zozo. I thought I told you my mission was top secret. Can you not even follow the most basic of instructions? I'm so sorry, Agent Warden. I didn't know it would upset you so much. I promise I won't tell anyone else your name. I'll keep your missions top secret. Good. That's more like it. For your next mission, I need you to go to the Sierra Valley again, the North specifically, and find your way to a research base hidden out there. They're puppets of Area 52, carrying out their evil bidding. If you value your freedom, you'll gather all the information about them you can. Yes, Agent Warden. I won't let you down this time. But that mission sounded dangerous, so before I could take it on, I needed to upgrade my gear. That's why I ventured down into an abandoned mine in the Black Forest to collect some iron. I mined until I had enough iron ore, which I then smelted into ingots in an abandoned furnace and crafted into a full set of iron armor, an iron sword, iron axe, and iron pickaxe. But it wasn't all easy. I was detected and attacked by a bunch of spiders while I was down there. This is what I get for shining bright like a diamond. It didn't take me long to defeat the spiders with my iron sword. Then it was time to prove myself to Agent Warden once again. From day 13 to day 15, I ventured out through the Sierra Valley until I found what looked like a small research base. It was crawling with scientists. Guess it's time to play detective and ask some tough questions. I snuck in and found one of the researchers alone. I cornered him and used my intimidating diamond venom look to get his undivided attention. Listen here, you're gonna tell me everything you know about your bosses at Area 52, or else! What? Uh, Area 52 aren't our bosses? Liar! I have it on good authority that you do all their evil bidding, so you better start telling the truth. I am telling the truth. The only time we ever collaborated was on the Warden Project. Wait, the what project? I've told you too much already. Just please, please leave me alone. Yes, I will. I'm so sorry for bothering you. I left the research base and started heading across the Sierra Valley. Something about all of this was terribly wrong, and I needed to get some answers from Agent Warden immediately. From day 16 to day 19, I made my way through the Black Forest back to Agent Warden's secret base as quickly as possible. But on the way, I ran into Robbie the Redstone Golem again. Robbie, what's wrong this time? Zozo, I found out some terrifying news, and I needed to tell you as soon as possible. 
The one who's been destroying whole villages is some kind of genetically enhanced warden, and he lives in this forest. Genetically enhanced warden? Oh no, oh no, no, no! I've had this all wrong! I need to get back to that research base and warn them! But by the time I'd crossed the Sierra Valley and reached the research base, it was already too late. The research base was in ruins, and who else was standing in the rubble but Agent Warden! I decided to rush in and confront him. Agent Warden, how could you? Why are you doing this? These people aren't under the orders of Area 52 at all! Oh, Zozo, as naive and small-minded as ever. You really are a diamond venom in the rough, aren't you? I don't know the full extent of your evil plan, but one thing I do know is that I'm not going to be a part of it, whatever awful thing you want to do! Be careful, Zozo. If you're not with me, you're against me! Then I guess I'm against you! You're about to find out just how strong a diamond venom really is! But Zozo, all symbiotes like you have two weaknesses. Fire and sound! Agent Warden unleashed a hugely powerful sonic boom out of his chest! It was a direct hit on me, and as soon as it connected, I fell unconscious! From day 20 to day 22, I woke up in the ruins of the Sierra Valley research base. Agent Warden was gone, and it looked like there was only one surviving scientist, the same one I'd interrogated earlier. You there. Zozo, was it? I'm Dr. Hardy. I, I saw that you tried to defend us against that terrible monster, and even though the destruction he caused was awful, it means a lot to know you're on our side. I'm still so sorry I couldn't help more, Dr. Hardy. I have no idea why Agent Warden just turned like that, but I have a feeling that if we work together, we can find out why. Want to come stay at my base and team up? That sounds like an excellent idea, Zozo. I want to get back against this monster any way I can. Dr. Hardy and I returned to my base, and I began working on a new room for him. It had an area for him to sleep, and an area for him to conduct any scientific experiments he needed to. Thank you, Zozo. This will do nicely. From day 23 to day 26, I made a trek back to the Red Desert, where I originally spawned, to see if I missed anything. If I was wrong about Agent Warden, I've got to make sure I pay more attention to things from now on. I carefully looked around and noticed there was an Isolager in trouble. Someone, please! I need a protector! An armored skeleton was running them down, and it seemed like it would catch them soon. I had to do something! Don't worry, Diamond Venom is here! I jumped into the path of the armored skeleton and hit him with my iron sword. It got his attention, but he wasn't looking that damaged from the attack. I had succeeded at making the armored skeleton attack me instead of the Isolager, but now it seemed I would have to deal with a strong and fast mob all on my own. It wasn't an easy fight, but in the end, I took home the W. The Isolager was delighted. That was amazing. We make a good team. You said it, Isolager. It's almost like a symbiotic relationship. Like a symbiote. Defeating the armored skeleton to save that Isolager had reminded me of my true strength and caused my powers to evolve. I now had 75 hearts and could dash to quickly close the gap with enemies. From day 27 to day 31, I was still in the red desert when I came across a herd of sheep. They were looking for grass to eat, but couldn't find any. I guess they must have been lost. This way, sheep, there's plenty of grass to graze on in the black forest. Back at the base, I made sure to build a pen for the sheep around some of that delicious grass I mentioned. Delicious for sheep, at least. This diamond venom is on an all-meat diet. Later on, I was walking through the base when I ran into the Isolager I had protected in the desert. Hey, Zozo, thanks again for your help the other day. Hey, Isolager, when did you get here? Oh, I've been here for a while. I noticed you have some scientists doing research here, so I thought I could help out in a big way. Follow me. I followed the Isolager to another part of the base and saw what he was talking about. He had upgraded the base with a research watchtower. The scientists are gonna love this. Meanwhile, somewhere in a secret place, Agent Warden was plotting the next phase of the Warden Project. And whatever that entailed was probably super evil. Everything is going according to my super secret plan. That's because you're so good at being evil, Warden. I agree, Pigless. Soon it will be time for you to play your role in how things proceed. It is an honor to serve you, sir. Piglis will make sure your every order is carried out without fail. From day 32 to day 35, I went to Area 52 to see if I could get any more answers out of the Royal Guards. 
Even if they didn't know anything else about what Agent Warden was up to, I could still reason with them and form an alliance. Ah, it's Diamond Venom! There's no reasoning with them! Battle formation! The Royal Guards fought against me, but I defended myself by using my armor to reduce the damage from their attacks. Hold it, guys! I really think we can work this out! Eh, he's trying to reason with us. I guess we were wrong about him. That's the first time we've been wrong about anything. The Royal Guards took me to the office of their top agent, Agent Horus. So, you must be that Diamond Venom that escaped from my holding cell a while back. It's a shame I never got to meet you in person. Is that because you were going to do some uncalled for experiments on me? What? No. What do you think we do around here? We thought that a diamond symbiote like you had the potential to be turned towards the side of good. That's why we brought you here. I'm glad you guys weren't up to anything sinister. You definitely could have been nicer about it, though. The kinds of super-powered monsters we deal with, it's hard not to go overboard. Especially after the Warden Project made us responsible for another monster. You mean Agent Warden? What is he up to? I can tell you it's something most secretive and most definitely sinister. We've been keeping tabs on him, but he's operating in the shadows now. I want to help you take him down. He betrayed me, and I don't like that kind of thing. Good. We could use a Venom like you on our side. Until Agent Warden is defeated, we'll make you a temporary secret agent. Agent Diamond Venom. I like the sound of that. From day 36 to day 39, I went mining for iron to fix up my armor. If I'm going to be playing the part of a secret agent, I should look like I've got the best gear. I dug down deep into the mining area and managed to strike iron. There was plenty of iron to go around, enough to fix my entire set of iron armor. Yes. There were some diamonds down there as well. I must have had a knack for finding them because I was a diamond venom myself. Diamonds are a diamond's best friend. Wait, what did I say? The diamonds weren't even the rarest treasure that I found in the mine. The honor went to the powerful battle axe that I found lodged in a wall. I went above ground with the spoils of my mining excursion and fixed up my armor. I finished just in time for the Isolager to come in and talk to me. Hey, Zozo. Actually, it's Agent Zozo. Right. Anyway, I was thinking we should expand our team. There's someone I want you to go talk to. They should be waiting for you at the Shattered Glacier. From day 40 to day 43, I went to the Shattered Glacier where the Isolager said I could meet our new contact. I was surprised and relieved to see that it was my old friend Robbie the Redstone Golem. I heard Area 52 made you a temporary agent. They are no friends of mine, but it's good to see that you're moving up in the world. Whatever it takes to stop that rampaging Agent Warden. What did you call me here to talk about? I wanted to ask if I could join your supergroup. Even if we're only working together in secret, this world needs protectors. I was about to ask him what he had in mind when a giant pigman ran towards us and stopped right next to us. It was Pigless, the new minion that was sent by Agent Warden. You were too easy to follow, Diamond Venom. Time to carry out Agent Warden's orders. And what would those be? There's no point in asking me that question. I'm not telling you. Pigless smashed a big hole in the ground to show off how strong he was. He's tough, Robbie. Do you think we could take him if we teamed up? Maybe, but for now, we should get somewhere safe to have the rest of our conversation. I nodded, and the two of us ran away as Pigless continued to smash his way across the shattered glacier. From day 44 to day 49, I was lying low in my base when I was visited by Agent Horus. He really must have been the top agent because I didn't even see him come in. Agent Zozo, I've got some key intel and a new assignment for you. Took you long enough. This diamond venom is on the job, whatever it is. There is an object known as the Destroyer, which was once in our possession at Area 52. We believe that in the right hands, it has the power to take down any bad guy. Even Agent Warden? Now, now, Diamond Venom. Just focus on finding the Destroyer and getting it to us. We'll handle the rest. Where can I find the Destroyer? It was last sighted in the Sierra Valley biome. You should head back there and search for it. Won't let you down, Agent Horus. From day 50 to day 53, on Horus's orders, I went to the Sierra Valley biome to learn more about the Destroyer. It looked like I wasn't the only agent on the case. A royal guard was already here, probably sent by Horus too. Hey there, agent. I'm Agent Zozo. I'm looking for the Destroyer too. Shh, keep your voice down. We don't know who's listening. I'll tell you what I know about the Destroyer, but you need a promise to keep it a secret. I promise. 
The truth about the Destroyer is that we made it in Area 52 using some rare materials from another dimension. Those materials are what gave the item its unmatched destructive power. What were the materials? And what dimension did they come from? That's classified. The point is, we were so impressed by these materials that we started to use them on a different project. The Warden Project. Let me guess, that was how Agent Warden got his superpowers. It was what made him a supervillain. The materials gave him destructive sonic abilities that were out of control. That's why we need a weapon like the Destroyer to take him out. I understand now. You keep looking around here. I'm gonna go back to the base for now. I left the Royal Guard to keep searching. That's when I saw a battle between an Iron Chicken and a Skeleton. The Iron Chicken looked like she would make a good addition to the super group I was forming with the others. I went to help her in the fight, but the Iron Chicken had already won by the time I even got a hit in. Whoa, you're strong. Do you want to join my superhero team? Sorry, Diamond Venom, but Iron Chicken works alone. She ran off right after saying that. I guess not everyone wants to team up with me. From day 54 to day 57, I was traveling through the Red Desert when I ran into none other than Pigless, Agent Warden's big brute of a henchman. What do you want, Pigless? I only want what Agent Warden orders me to want. That's how loyal of a henchman I am. Okay, and what does Agent Warden want? He ordered me to take out the trash, and the trash is you. Pigless hit me hard, sending me flying across the desert. His super strength was so much stronger than mine, and I was practically super duper strength. I fought back, but I was losing a lot of hearts to the big pig's punches. You really are trash. Just call me the trash compactor. Actually, I prefer to be recycled, and by that I mean live to fight another day. I knew I couldn't win, so I ran away from Pigless. He might have been strong, but sure was slow. While his henchman was keeping me busy, Agent Warden was in his secret base, developing a personal teleporter that would take him between dimensions at will. Once I harness the true destructive contained in the other dimensions, I will be unstoppable. From day 58 to day 62, I met with the scientist who's been living in my base to see what he's been up to. How's the research been going, Dr. Hardy? I've got amazing things to tell you about, Zozo. The statue I've been working on is really coming along. It'll be one of the great achievements when we're done building it. Awesome work! There is one slight issue, though. I've run out of building materials. Do you think you could fetch us more? Of course. I was just heading down to the mine anyway. I returned to where I had been mining before and dug further into the area with the diamonds. I was determined to get even more of them so I could get a complete set of diamond gear to match my diamond body. I also made sure to get more stone and iron while I was there so the scientists could continue work on the statue. Once I had enough of everything, I left the mine and gave the scientists what they had been looking for. Then I went to the crafting table and made myself a diamond sword, diamond boots, and a diamond helmet. Diamond Venom is more diamond than ever! From day 63 to day 66, I received another visit from Agent Horus. He must really want me to find that destroyer. I looked around like you told me to, but I haven't found it anywhere. That's all right, Agent Zozo. The Royal Guards and I have done that part of the job ourselves. We have reason to believe that the destroyer somehow crossed dimensions back to where it originally came from. The destroyer is in another dimension? Yes, in another world known as the end. How can I get there from here? Take a look at this portal we installed in your base. Agent Horus led me to an incomplete end portal, which at the moment wasn't working. I wonder where they even got this portal, but I didn't want to question Agent Horus. What do I have to do in order to reactivate the end portal? No idea. We've never gotten any farther than this, but if it does activate, you should let us know post haste. From day 67 to day 70, I kept an eye on the end portal that Area 52 had installed in my base. There were no signs of activity, and I wondered if I would ever get the chance to get the destroyer. I was relieved of this duty when Robbie, the redstone golem, showed up again. Hey Robbie, what are you up to? We've got ourselves a new objective, Zozo. There's some trouble down at the shattered glacier, and we should go help out. What's the problem? One dangerous mob called the Skeleton Jackal might be a new supervillain. Leave it to me, Robbie. I arrived at the Shattered Glacier and saw exactly what Robbie was talking about. The Skeleton Jackal had claimed the Shattered Glacier as his own territory. Diamond Venom, you're too late. I, the Skeleton Jackal, will soon be the most powerful new villain out there. Sorry, but I already have an arch nemesis, and he's not you. 
I'll make you take me seriously. The skeleton jackal attacked me with his claws, but I fought back with my trusty battle axe. We were evenly matched in damage, but my diamond armor and diamond skin made my defenses that much stronger. You might be durable, Diamond Venom, but this fight isn't over by a long shot. Stop this! We don't have to fight! What if instead of a villain, you decided to be an anti-hero? You can still be scary, but you also get to do the right thing. Anti-hero, huh? I guess I could give it a try. Wow, it worked! Welcome to the team, Skeleton Jackal! From day 71 to day 74, my base was under attack by Piglas, who was using his brute force to smash giant holes into the surrounding terrain! Piggy power! Stop it, Piglas! I used my dash ability and started swinging my battle axe at Piglas, inflicting damage on him! Ouch! That axe hurts! Can I have it? Piglas punched me, causing me to drop the battle axe. Uh -oh. He picked it up himself and started swinging it at me. I equipped my diamond sword and continued to fight, but Piglas was even more deadly with the battle axe in his hand. Give that back, it's not yours. It is now, eat this. Piglas wound up a big punch and sent me careening straight into a hill and caused me to get heavily dazed. When I got back up, he was already gone. It was no use trying to get my battle axe back now. It looked like my base was totally wrecked, too. Piglas! I was really sad, so I went to the river to be alone for a bit. After a while, Isolager came by to cheer me up. Hey, Zozo, I know you're feeling down about losing your weapon, but I've rebuilt the base and added a perimeter wall to keep out future attacks. You're the best, Isolager. I'm glad you're part of my super group. Meanwhile, back at Agent Warden's base, my arch nemesis had gained the powers of the interdimensional energies he was attempting to harness. Area 52 thought I was a mistake and tried to destroy me. <laughs> their real mistake was not going further with their experiments. From day 75 to day 78, Agent Horace came to check on the base and give me a brand new weapon to replace my battle axe, the Javelin. We heard what happened with Piglas. It sounds like you've really gotten on Agent Warden's bad side. That Piglas is a real menace. He's going down, just like Agent Warden. You're in luck. We've got the location of Agent Warden's secret base. We figured we'd send you over there to do some real damage. I'll do more than that. This might just be business for Area 52, but it's always personal for me. I took the javelin and set off through the Black Forest toward Agent Warden's secret base. If Piglas was there, I'd be sure to get my revenge from last time. From day 79 to day 84, I was sneaking around the outside of Agent Warden's secret base, and sure enough, I found exactly who I was looking for, Piglas. Agent Zozo, looks like recycling day came early. I'll break you down like a cardboard box. You're the one who's gonna be broken, Piglas. I threw my javelin at Piglas, catching him off guard, and then I used the opportunity to hit him a bunch of times with my diamond sword. Not bad, I didn't expect that new weapon, but did you really forget your old weapon so soon? No, please Piglas, anything but battle axe. Piglas swung the battle axe that he stole from me, taking off a ton of hearts. He was wielding the weapon as if it was meant for him. Once again, my diamond sword couldn't stand up to him, especially since my super strength was weaker than his. I really like being a henchman, you know. When I secretly get rid of someone, Agent Warden rewards me with treasure. I wonder how rich I'll be after I deal with you. Oh no, am I going to lose? As Piglas prepared to deliver the decisive blow with my own battle axe, I heard a voice from the trees. It was the Skeleton Jackal. Zozo. Don't forget that you're Diamond Venom, a shining inspiration to anti-heroes everywhere. You're right. Inspired by Skeleton Jackal's words, I grew into a form powerful enough to take on Piglas, even with the battle axe. I had 100 hearts and Diamond Venom claws that were stronger than any diamond sword. With my new form, he was dropped in no time. Well, I did the best I could. But sometimes a henchman is just a henchman. Your boss Agent Warden is next, Piglas. And with that, Piglas vanished. From day 85 to day 89, I went back to my base to tell everyone that I had defeated Piglas in battle. I went and visited the scientists first to inquire about the state of the statue. 
I've made some amazing strides in the pursuit of the statue, but I'm still missing some materials. Could you grab me some more wood? Sure, let me grab some from my chest. I took some wood from my chest and brought it back to Dr. Hardy, who then escorted me to the statue. It was a statue of Dr. Hardy, halfway through transforming into normal Venom. I guess he must have been a big fan. Afterwards, I returned to the side of the end portal, where Agent Horace was waiting for me. It seems that Agent Warden has already gone to the end to harness the materials there. If the Destroyer falls into his hands, he'll be even more unstoppable than a big pigman with a battle axe. That's pretty specific, but I totally understand what you mean. These eyes of Ender that the Royal Guards have gathered should be able to jumpstart the portal. Get in there and make us proud. Yes, sir. He activated the portal and I stepped through. Suddenly, I found myself in the Nightshade Forest. This must be the main biome of the dimension known as the End. This is feeling strangely familiar again. Not too far away, I saw the Destroyer lying on the ground. I didn't have time to go and grab it. An Enderman appeared out of the trees and started to attack me. Ugh, I guess I've got to deal with the mob first. I used my diamond sword combined with my claw attacks to make the Enderman back off and run away. With the mob gone, I picked up the destroyer and headed back towards the portal. From day 90 to day 94, I heard someone sneaking up behind me. It was Agent Warden. Welcome home, diamond in the rough. This isn't my home. Home is on the other side of this portal, and I intend on going back. After I defeat you, that is. You won't defeat me, Agent Zozo. You're just like me. The diamond symbiote that grants you all of your powers is from the end. That's why this place is your home. I'm from the end? Yes, and that's why I want you on my side. I need someone to help me reap the rewards that exist in this world. The materials that gave me powers could make an army of sonic warriors. I'm not joining you. Area 52 trusted me to take you down, and that's what I'll do. You're making a mistake. Agent Horus and the others are weak, and that's why they capture and create super beings to fight their battles. I think we should choose our own battles, don't you? I actually agree. That's why I'm choosing my battle to be me versus you. I threw my javelin, but Agent Warden took it like it was nothing and bombarded me with a sonic blast. Even though I'd gotten stronger, sonic attacks were still my weakness. His powers had increased so much that I was powerless against him. Agent Warden hit me with a few melee attacks before knocking me out and stealing the destroyer. I'll be having that. See you on the other side, diamond in the rough. He ran off through my end portal. From day 95 to day 97, I was able to muster enough strength to crawl my way to the portal. There's no time to lose. I have to warn Agent Horus. And with that, I crawled into the portal. When I got to the secret research lab of Area 52, I found that all of the Royal Guards had been wiped out by Agent Warden in a destruction spree. This was definitely the Destroyer's handiwork. I kept searching around until I stumbled upon Agent Horus. He was the last one alive and was hanging on by a thread. You sure kept us waiting, huh? Agent Horus, I'm sorry. I couldn't stop him. He used my weakness against me. No, Agent Zozo, I'm sorry. It was our foolishness and greed that led to Agent Warden's rise to power. If only we had been more careful and not tried to turn what we didn't understand into weapons. You couldn't have known he'd go this evil. It's all right. Area 52 will be no more after I'm gone. I need you to clean up our last mess, Diamond Venom. Make sure you stop him. Horace died, trying to harness the forces beyond his control. Now Agent Warden was trying to do the same thing. I'd make sure it didn't end well for him either. On day 98, I found my base had been destroyed in another one of Agent Warden's evil rampages. The scientist, Isolager, and Skeleton Jackal were all destroyed too. Every member of my team, gone. This is unforgivable. I knew Agent Warden was my arch nemesis, but I never thought he'd go this far. I stood there in total shock for a long time until I heard some familiar heavy footsteps. Robbie. Agent Zozo. No, just Zozo. I'm sorry that I couldn't protect the rest of the team. He was too strong. Don't beat yourself up about it, Robbie. I feel a bit better knowing that at least my very first friend is still here with me. You know what? I feel the same way. You're alive and I'm alive. We've got to do something to make that count. 
I'll tell you what we'll do. We're gonna take back the Destroyer, and then we're gonna give Agent Warden payback for everything he's done! Now that's the symbiote I know! Let's rock! On day 99, Robbie and I closed in on Agent Warden's secret base, which hadn't changed location since the time I fought Pigless there. I'll learn Agent Warden out with a distraction, then you surprise attack him and steal the Destroyer! Sounds good. Be careful, Robbie. I went to hide behind a tree as Robbie stepped out and waved his arms. Hey, Warden, look at me! I'm so destroyable! Ha ha! Come destroy me! Sure enough, Agent Warden stepped out of the base with the Destroyer in his hands. He started moving towards Robbie. Now is my chance! I used my dash ability to rush at Agent Warden. Just as planned, I was able to grab the Destroyer and run away. Robbie turned and ran away too. Ha ha! I'm not destroyed! Better luck next time! When we got back to the base, I immediately took a closer look at the Destroyer. It was definitely made with the same materials that made Agent Warden's sonic blast so strong. It was also from the end, like my symbiote. Maybe if I… well, here goes nothing! I absorbed the material in the Destroyer using my symbiote, and I could feel that it was enhancing my diamond skin to a whole new level of durability! It worked! Now my souped up diamond skin will be able to resist his sonic attacks! On day 100, I returned to Agent Warden's secret base for our final showdown. I of course brought Robbie with me. We entered his base and went downstairs. This time, Agent Warden was already waiting for us in his underground lair. This stops here, Agent Warden. You're not destroying anything else in your quest for mad science. When will you learn, symbiote? My sonic attacks will render you immobile once again! He fired a sonic blast at me, but I didn't even flinch this time. Because despite its name, the Destroyer had made me indestructible. How did you do that? I knew your weakness! It's like you always said, I am a diamond in the rough, and now this diamond is gonna rough you up! I called forth the Destroyer from within my symbiote and attacked using it! The shockwave smashed the surrounding area and did serious damage to Agent Warden! He's weak! My turn! Robbie rushed in and smacked him with his golem arms a couple times! I joined in with a diamond claw attack! Agent Warden tried to fight back, but his powers were useless against me now! Please, no more! This is for everyone at Area 52 and everyone at my base too! No, please! All I wanted was to be able to blow up whatever I wanted! I was just acting mysterious to look cool! Well, now the truth is out, and the truth is, you got what was coming to you. Then, I swung the Destroyer one last time, and he was gone! Leaving me and Robbie to celebrate the fact that the world was safe again. Day one, I spawned into a cave full of wolves as a devil golem. That explains my devilish charm. Oh, wait, looks like I'm only a baby devil golem. Maybe these wolves are raising me. I can't remember much. That's when a huge, scary soul eater came barging out of the shadows, like he was looking for me the whole time. Don't you remember me, Zozo? You used to work for me until you got all those silly ideas about kindness and personal freedom into your head. Why don't you work for me again? You can help my world domination plans come true. World domination? Sorry, Mr. Soul Eater, but that really doesn't sound like my scene. Fine, then finish! And just like that, the Soul Eater started breathing fire! I managed to dodge it just in time, but my wolf friends weren't so lucky! They got fried! Oh no, my wolf friends! You monster! The Soul Eater didn't care! He just watched as I ran out of the cave! Me and my minions are going to hunt you, Zozo! We're the most powerful beings you've ever faced, and I guarantee we'll destroy you within 100 days! 100 days avoiding the Soul Eater and his crazy evil minions? Seemed like I had my work cut out for me! On day two, I was able to escape the cave with my life, but I wasn't out of the woods yet. In fact, I'd literally run out right into the woods. What a coincidence. And I only have three hearts? If I mess with the wrong mob while I'm this weak, I'll be a goner, for sure. So imagine how I felt when a djinn, a powerful magical creature, flew out of the trees and started attacking me. You don't normally find djinns in overworld forests, so he must have been one of the evil soul eater's minions. Can't you guys leave me alone? I don't even know what's going on yet. There's something wrong with all of my memories. 
but the Jin was no talk, all action. He started attacking me with his extreme speed and magical abilities. I didn't stand a chance against him. But just as I was about to give up hope, a glowing wisp suddenly appeared behind me. She seemed almost as frantic as I was. Quick, tell me. Are you a good devil golem or an evil devil golem? I'm really trying my best to be a good one. Correct answer, stranger. As the djinn prepared another attack, the wisp grabbed a hold of me and teleported me out of there. On day three, thanks to being teleported by the wisp, we arrived in a friendly village where things seemed to finally be a little chill. I was grateful for that. Thanks for saving me, Miss Wisp. I'm Zozo. What's your name? I'm Windy. Windy Wisp. And there's somebody I need you to meet, Zozo. Windy Wisp led me through the village until we found the biggest building in town. There was a Viking villager named Eric waiting outside for us. Eric, I found one. A good devil golem, just like you said. Eric seemed impressed. Do my eyes deceive me? All this time, I thought creatures like you were a myth. But I was wrong. Wait, I'm a little confused here. What do you mean, creatures like me? Dark magic entities. Devils. They all work in service of the Soul Eater. And until now, I believed that they had no choice in the matter. But you, Zozo, you have proven that it's possible for even devils to choose to be good. But what does all this mean? It means that you are a symbol of resistance, my boy. Perhaps, in these extremely important next 100 days, you can lead the charge to defeat him once and for all. What do you say, Zozo? Do you accept the call? Of course I do. Somebody's got to teach that meanie some manners. That's what I like to hear. Windy, take him to the plains to start building his base. His training must begin immediately. Yes, Eric. Come on, Zozo, let's go. On days four to five, Windy Wisp teleported us to the plains, where we could start building an awesome base to sleep and train in. We should start with some wood, Zozo. It's impossible to craft without having the right tools. Very good point, Windy. I used my tough devil golem fist to break down some trees and gathered enough wooden blocks and sticks to craft myself a wooden pick. Yes. This is pretty cool, I guess, but I think we can do a lot better. Using my wooden pickaxe, I started mining and gathering up some stone and other materials for the house. After that, it was easy to make myself a set of stone weapons and tools. Hey, that's more like it. It's building time, baby. I used some of my gathered wood and stone to start putting together a nice mansion. Of course, it had bedrooms for both me and Windy Wisp, so we'd have places to sleep. She was so grateful for the help, she wanted to give me a gift. This is a potion of strength, Zozo. I brewed it with my wisp magic, and I think drinking it will help you on your quest. That's awesome, Wendy, thank you. I guess the only thing left to say is, bottoms up. I took a drink from the potion and immediately found myself getting bigger and stronger. I even gained two more hearts. Five hearts, nice, I'm moving up in the world. On day six to day eight, feeling a little more confident about myself with a base and my new size and hearts, I decided to wander the plains. Maybe if I search around enough, I can find something that'll help me get my memories back. But instead, I found something wild, a mage getting attacked by a Gru, a scary floating demon. Excuse me, young devil golem, can I get a little help here? The name's Zozo, and help is on its way. I pulled out my stone sword and started attacking the Gru. My first real fight, how exciting. The Gru fought back and knocked off one of my hearts, but in the end, I managed to defeat it and save the mage from its wrath. Thank goodness you turned up, Zozo. You really saved my bacon there. I don't know how I could ever repay you. Oh, don't worry, mage. It's all in a day's work for me. I'm training to become a great hero and one day defeat the Soul Eater. So in the meantime, I'm happy to defeat any evildoer I can get my hands on. In that case, would you mind helping me out with something else? You see, I came to this forest to slay a banshee that was scaring away some of the local villagers until this Gru started attacking me. Perhaps together, we could defeat the Wailing Monster. A banshee? Sure, how hard can it ban be? Please promise me you won't make any more jokes like that, Zozo. Oh, okay, sorry. On day nine to day 10, Mage and I traveled to the forest to look for the Banshee. How do you know when we're getting close? Oh, you'll know. I was about to ask him what he meant when I heard the loudest scream I'd ever heard. Let me guess, that's the Banshee. What was your first clue? I wanted to make a joke, but before I could, a Banshee came flying out of the trees right towards us. 
It was shrieking all the way. I wanted to run, but I knew I had to be brave and stand by my new friend. I drew my stone sword and got ready for a fight. Mage and I tried our best, but the banshee was much stronger than I expected. It knocked me down, then knocked the mage into a tree, and I knew we were outmatched. Let's get out of here. We ran away from the banshee before it could do any more damage. Dang, I was hoping the two of us together would be enough. I guess I have to get stronger first. In the meantime, you can stay with me at my base. You'll be safe there. Thank you. On day 11 to day 12, I returned home with Mage. I made sure to build him a room there, including a crafting bench and a chest. Thank you for the help and the hospitality, Zozo. Absolutely. Now that we're somewhere safe and we can rest, I was wondering, do you know anything about the Soul Eater? I know that he doesn't take kindly to his former employees leaving him for the side of good, which, as I understand, you did? Apparently, and now he and his minions are hunting me. Well, he's a nasty piece of work, and I don't know anyone who wouldn't like to see him finally taken out. If you need help, I'm on your side. Thanks, and I'll help you too. Once I'm stronger, we'll get that banshee. After Mage and I talked, I built some bookcases for the base. Mage brought me a book to add to the bookcase, and I found an unbreakable enchantment inside. Great, this will make my weapons stronger. Thanks so much. To finish out the day, I built a chicken coop and herded some chickens into it. Finally satisfied with the job well done, Mage and I both turned in for the night to get some sleep. From day 13 to day 15, I wanted to find new ways to get stronger so I could help with the Banshee and eventually defend myself against the Soul Eater. So I went to Wendy Wisp for some advice. Well, I think getting more fighting experience is always a good way to get stronger. Maybe you should make a new weapon too. Something you can use to fight from a distance. Great idea. So I went out and gathered some wood and string and used them to craft myself a bow and arrow. Now it's time to take this thing out for a spin. I needed to try out my new weapon somewhere full of the biggest, baddest enemies possible. I know, I'll go to the Badlands. I ventured out to the Badlands and spotted Sudoramu, the giant scorpion and one of the Soul Eater's minions picking on a bunch of smaller scorpions. Hey, cut that out. As it turned to rush at me, I shot it with an arrow. It hit, and it actually did some damage. Awesome, Wendy was right. This thing is great. I fired some more arrows, and before I knew it, I defeated Sudoramu. The little scorpion scattered and ran away. I think you would have been nice, but I didn't blame them for wanting to get out of there as fast as possible. Hey, looks like that giant scorpion dropped something. It was a subscribe to Zozo. Wow, I feel stronger and smarter already. I even gained two hearts. From day 16 to day 19, I decided to explore the area around the Badlands. I came across a cave I hadn't seen before. Cool, I wonder if there are any good materials in here. Once I entered the cave, however, I got a really bad feeling. Uh-oh, something isn't right here. Even though I was feeling nervous, I spotted a chest and decided to open it. It was full of netherite. Oh, cool! I've never seen this stuff before! How'd you get in here? This cave belongs to the boss! I was ambushed by a wildkin! Do you work for the Soul Eater? That's right! You shouldn't have decided to come in here! Now you'll never leave! He rushed me and started to attack, knocking me into the cave wall! I got him a few more times, and before long, I had managed to win the fight! Hey, wait a second! If this cave belongs to the Soul Eater, and it's full of netherite, I bet that means he's from the nether. From day 20 to day 22, I started the journey back to my base. I couldn't wait to tell my friends about the battles I'd won while I was gone. On the way, I trained myself a little more on a group of spiders that attacked me. I defeated them easily. I really am getting stronger. After I defeated the spiders, I found some iron, which I made sure to pick up and take home with me. Once I made it back to the base, I smelted the iron and used it to craft some iron armor, an iron sword, and an iron shield. I finally feel ready to go back and face the Banshee again. Mage is going to be so excited. I traveled back to the forest where I first saw the Banshee. Just as I realized I was getting close, the Banshee flew at me and screamed. Luckily, I had my new armor to protect me. I pulled out my new iron sword and started swinging. This time, I'm ready for you. The Banshee kept swooping at me, but I was able to take the hits this time thanks to my new gear. Finally, I swung my sword for the last time and the Banshee dissolved and disappeared. I knew I had won. Something about this whole fight felt familiar too. I suddenly remembered. I had met this Banshee before, a long time ago. She worked for the Soul Eater too. We had worked together once, but I couldn't stand watching her attack innocent people just trying to walk through the woods. I've got to get back to my base and tell Mage about this. 
From day 23 to day 26, I tried to think and see if I could remember anything else from my days of working for the Soul Eater. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't. I rushed back home to my base, where Mage was waiting for me. I did it! I got rid of the Banshee! That's great, Zozo! Thank you so much for your help! So, now that the Banshee's taken care of, I guess you'll probably head back to where you came from. Nonsense! I'll stay here with you until the Soul Eater is defeated, once and for all! I'll do whatever I can to help! Really? Awesome! After I talked to Mage, I gathered some stone and constructed a stone watchtower to keep my base more secure. I found some guster eyes and sand from a guster someone in the forest must have slain and quickly scooped them up. I used the items to craft a pocket of sand. I can use this to temporarily blind enemies. Finally, I built some walls around my base. Now this is looking really secure. From day 27 to 31, I decided to keep exploring and see what else I could learn about the Soul Eater and my bad old days working for him. My journey took me all the way to the beach. Wow, look at all the sun and sand and that beautiful ocean. Wow. I'd love to kick back and relax, but I don't have time for that right now. Gotta keep moving. As I was walking, I saw a horseshoe crab flipped over on its back. Hey, let me help you with that. I flipped him back over. Gee, thanks so much, stranger. Of course. Do you need a safe place to stay? You can always go to my base. That sounds amazing. I told them the way to go and sent them on their journey. Then I continued onward. Along the beach, I found a shark tooth. Neat, I can use this to craft shark tooth arrows. With my new materials, I headed back to my base. Once I was there, I put up some decorative banners to make the place feel more festive for the new residents. Pretty spiffy if I do say so myself. Sorry to interrupt your decorating, Zozo, but I need some help. Herrick's in trouble, his village is under attack. Oh no, there's no time to waste. Let's go right now. From day 32 to day 35, Wendy and I rushed to the village to see what was going on. We arrived to find the place in ruins, filled with reavers making trouble. Oh no, they work for the Soul Eater. This is terrible. Luckily, we're here to help. I took out my bow and started firing arrows at the reavers, taking them out one by one. I was doing my best, but I definitely needed some help. Thankfully, Eric came running up to join the fight. I was so busy fending off the reaver who was attacking me that I didn't notice two reavers sneaking up behind Eric. By the time I noticed, it was too late. They both swarmed him and knocked him down. He didn't get back up. Eric, no! I rushed up and defeated the reavers that knocked him down, but Eric was already gone. There was no time to mourn. I had to take down the rest of the reavers. I finished up the fight and looked at the wreckage of the village. I couldn't save him. You did your best, Zozo. Don't blame yourself. Blame that evil soul eater. From day 36 to day 39, I needed to get my mind off of what happened to Eric. So I ventured out to the desert for a change of scenery. As I was walking through the sandy landscape, a little neck ran up to me. I pulled out my sword and got ready for a fight, but he was friendly. Hey, whoa, buddy. I don't want any trouble. I heard you were the guy to ask for help around here. I sure am. What is it? I need help defeating a crypt keeper that took over the cave I was living in. Can you do it? You bet. I headed to the cave and saw the Crypt Keeper lurking near the entrance. I fired an arrow at him and caught him by surprise. The rest of the fight went pretty quick, and I returned to tell that neck everything was okay now. Thanks so much. Say, you're trying to take on the Soul Eater, aren't you? I am. Do you know anything about him? Only that he's from the Nether. I thought so. Thank you. From day 40 to day 43, I headed back to my base from the desert. This place could use a little sprucing up. I decided to add some couches to give all my friends more places to sit and hang out. That looks much better. After I finished with the couches, the horseshoe crab I helped on the beach came to talk to me. Thanks for giving me somewhere to stay. I've been really lonely since my friends moved to the forest. Hey, maybe they could come stay here too. Would that be okay? Sure, I don't see why not. I built some additional rooms for the extra crabs, then headed out into the forest to find them. It was pretty easy to spot crabs in a forest, so I tracked them down and invited them to the base. They were excited to come stay with us. Thank you so much, Zozo. I'm sorry to ask for something else, but could you help me out? There's some mutant zombies making trouble out in the mountains, and I don't know any other hero who could help get rid of them. No trouble at all. I'll get to it. From day 44 to day 49, I arrived in the mountains. Okay, mutant zombies, where are you hiding? Foolish Zozo, the mutant zombies are long gone. 
These mountains are my territory now. The Soul Eater jumped down from the top of a mountain, landing with a crash. Did you think you could hide from me? I told you we were coming for you. No one walks away from working for me, not without consequences. I'll destroy everything you love and make you regret leaving. I don't even remember working for you. Doesn't matter. I'll destroy your base and eliminate all your little friends. Then you'll have no choice but to be my minion again. Never! I drew my sword and got ready for a fight. But the Soul Eater disappeared in a puff of smoke. In his place, he left behind a huge strong reaper. Uh-oh. Well, time to see how strong I really am. From day 50 to day 53, I battled against the Reaper. He was much bigger than me, but I had something he didn't, my trusty bow. I ran backwards to get some distance between us so he couldn't land any blows, and I started firing arrows at him. That was the advantage I needed to turn the fight into my favor. I'm a much better fighter now. Finally, the Reaper fell, and I knew I had won, and he dropped something. What's this? I picked it up, and it was a book of secrets. Wow, I wonder what secrets this has. You're the only minion I've ever shown my secret hideout. The only other place I have the location is written down in my book of secrets. You've got it, boss. That's right, I saw his secret hideout. I can't believe I forgot. From day 54 to day 57, I ventured through the plains on my way back to the base. There, I saw a horde of mutant zombies. This must be where they went when the Soul Eater drove them out of the mountains. I pulled out my bow and sword and got ready to attack. Hey, you undead freaks! I shot an arrow their way. As they turned their attention on me, even more mutant zombies came up behind me and attacked. Uh-oh, there are more of these guys than I thought. The fight was much harder than I expected. For a little bit, I was worried I might actually lose and never get the chance to beat the Soul Eater. But with the help of my trusty bow and sword, I was able to turn things around and take out all the mutant zombies. One of them dropped a potion of regeneration on the ground. I quickly picked it up. This will definitely come in handy when I go up against the Soul Eater. Time to head home. I drank the potion and transformed into a full-sized golem. I even gained three hearts to a total of ten. I traveled back to the base and told the horseshoe crab that the mutant zombies were toast. Yay, I love toast. It's just an expression. It means they're gone. You're the best, Zozo. Just doing my job. Job? Wait a minute. You used to work for the Soul Eater. You helped him steal materials from villages near the beach. Oh no, I don't remember any of that. Well, I'll have to do whatever I can to make amends for my past. I hope defeating the Soul Eater will be enough. You're definitely nothing like you used to be. You're a hero now. From day 58 to day 62, I decided to improve the food situation at the base. I built more chicken coops and herded some chickens inside. That's more like it. That should help keep everyone fed. Next, I decided it was time to upgrade my gear. Time to find more diamonds. I went exploring in the mines and dug as deep as I could until I finally saw them. Beautiful, sparkly, strong as heck diamonds. I took them back to my base and got to work crafting some diamond armor, diamond tools, and a diamond sword. I'd like to see someone try to mess with me now. Before I set off on my next journey, I decided to improve the base a little more. I built some chests for extra storage and added some flower pots for an extra decorative touch, too. This place is looking better every day. From day 63 to day 66, I decided it was time to venture out into the world beyond my base and explore some more. On the way out, I ran into Wendy the Wisp. Zozo, I was looking for you. What's up? I had a dream about you. I think it might mean something. I saw you in the middle of a snowy tundra. Maybe there's something out there that will help you. Wow, maybe. I'll definitely go check it out. With this new clue in mind, I headed out into the snowy tundra. Brr, it's cold out here. I hope I can find something helpful fast so I can get out of here and warm up. As I walked, I saw a Yeti watching me. Hey you, I don't want any trouble. Neither do I. Oh, okay, that's good. I was scared you might be here working for the Soul Eater. He's got it in for me, and I'm getting pretty scared. Oh no, I don't work for him. Not anymore, at least. Can you help me find a way to keep myself safe? I really don't know what to do. Absolutely, let's see what we can find. From day 67 to day 70, the Yeti and I explored the snowy tundra, looking for clues or items that could help us. As we walked past an ice cave, a sylph came flying out at us. 
Everywhere I look, it's another thing. It's not easy trying to be good. What do we do? We have to be brave and fight. The sylph rushed at us and started attacking. But I was ready with my sword and shield. The sylph swooped at me, but I blocked its hit and slashed with my sword. I got a few good hits in before it swooped at the Yeti instead. Leave him alone. Pick on someone your own size. I rushed at the sylph and knocked it away from the defenseless Yeti and delivered the finishing blow. Yeah, that's what happens when you mess with my new friend. I just wish I had a way to fight for myself when the bad guys come after me. What will I do next time without you here to help? I'm sure we'll find something. <gasps> Wait a second, look at this. The sylph dropped something when we defeated it. I picked it up and handed it to the Yeti. An iron sword. Here, Yeti, you take this. It'll help you defend yourself if the Soul Eater's minions come to bother you. Are you sure? Gee, thanks so much. You're right. You're not like the Soul Eater's minions at all. You're nice. I'm trying my best. Well, keep doing what you're doing, and I bet it'll all work out. Thanks for your help. I feel much more prepared for whatever comes my way next. From day 71 to day 74, I said goodbye to the Yeti, then decided to keep exploring this cold area. I was getting pretty used to it. Now that the ice cave didn't have the sylph lurking in it anymore, I wanted to see what was inside. The cave led down into some huge ice caverns. Whoa, look at all of this. As I walked, I saw the strangest thing. There, on the wall of the cave, was written the words, make sure to subscribe to the channel to keep up the adventures. And be sure to find more Zozo videos by searching Zio, Zio. Huh, weird. Oh well, time to keep looking. Just then, the Soul Eater busted through the subscribe sign in front of me. Ready to come back and work for me yet? Ah, you? No, I'll never work for you again. I'm a good guy now. We'll see how good you are when you don't have any of your little friends. Just you wait, you'll come back. They always come back. Not me, I'll take you down if you hurt my friends. The Soul Eater just laughed. Try to beat me and it will spell your doom. I'll be in touch. Not so fast. I couldn't let him get away that easily. I drew my sword and ran at him, and he drew his weapon with lightning speed. He was ready for me, and he blocked my first hit, then knocked me back. It was a hard hit. Ow! Uh-oh, I might not be strong enough yet. You'll never be strong enough. You'll always be my lackey, no matter what. I wanted to stay and fight, but I knew I needed to flee if I wanted to live another day and eventually beat him. I had no choice but to run away before things got too scary. I'll show him. I'll get even stronger, and I'll prove that he can't keep pushing people around. From day 75 to day 78, I ran all the way back home to my base. I needed to do something to take my mind off that face off of the Soul Eater, and fixing up the base was the perfect way to do it. Making this place cozier would make me feel better. So I built a fireplace and lit a big, roaring fire inside. Finally, I can warm up after all that time in the snow. Once the fireplace was finished, I sat down next to it and got comfortable. While I was lounging by the fire, the horseshoe crab came over to say hello. This looks great. I love the fireplace. Thanks. What's up? I wanted to give you something. As a thank you for everything you've done to help me and others who found themselves in trouble. He handed me a baked potato. I was getting pretty hungry. That's no ordinary baked potato. It's a magic baked potato. I think it'll help you get stronger. Oh, wow. I thought regular potatoes were already pretty magical, but that's even better. I took a bite and it tasted great. I mean, it was a potato. Of course it did. I quickly ate the whole thing. Then I felt myself growing bigger and stronger. I gained five hearts. You weren't kidding. I feel great. You look powerful, as powerful as the Soul Eater. I sure hope so. Thank you so much. That was an amazing gift. From day 79 to day 84, I decided to test out my new strength on some hostile mobs. Let's see what this new bigger me is made of. I ventured all the way out to the savannah to see what I could find. There were a ton of skeletons roaming around, and when they saw me, they started closing in around me. Maybe I'd be scared of you back when I was smaller, but now I'm ready to fight. It hardly took me any time at all to beat the skeletons. Take that, you boneheads. After I finished with the skeletons, I was walking around when I spotted a lion curled up on a rock. Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. I promise I'm not lying. <laughs> I laughed at my own joke. The lion looked confused, but then he laughed too. I love jokes. How did you know? I love jokes too. I'm so glad you appreciate a sense of humor. My sense of humor is my pride and joy. Get it? Pride? 
Like lions? I do get it. Nice one. It's so nice to meet someone who knows how to laugh. You know what? Why don't you take this? I don't need it. And maybe it'll be of some use to you. A crossbow? Thanks. Right on target then? Yeah. From day 85 to day 89, I returned back to my base to show off my crossbow and tell everyone about the hilarious lion I met. When I got there though, it was in chaos. There were wargs attacking my base and tearing it apart. They smashed my flower pots and tore down my banners. If you fools touch my fireplace, I'll freak out. And then I saw it. They had smashed my fireplace. That's the last straw. Get out of my base or there's more where that came from. I didn't want to destroy them though. I wanted to know where they came from. So when they started to run away, I chased after them. But I lost track of them when I followed them through the forest. Oh no, which way did they go? As I was looking, I ran into a black bear. The wargs? I can point you their way. That would be great. Just help me first and I'll tell you where they went. Get me some honey. I've got a craving, but I don't have any money. No pockets, so I have nowhere to put it. Oh, okay, sure. I searched until I found a beehive. Please don't sting me, bees. I quickly snagged some honeycomb, which I took back to the bear. Here you go. Yum. Okay, they went that way. Wait, couldn't you have just gone to the beehive the whole time? Yeah, but they might have stung me. This worked much better. I didn't have time to argue with this weird bear. I ran after the wargs. From day 90 to day 94, I ran in the direction that the bear pointed me in. I followed the trail until I finally reached the wargs, gathered together in a lair made of bones. I see you finally made it. Come, come. Let's talk. I looked and saw a shade standing at the entrance of the bone lair. I followed him down into the lair. You were waiting for me? I was. The boss wants me to teach you a lesson. Make sure you finally learn your place. You think you're too good for the Soul Eater? You're wrong. I'm stronger now. I can take you. I'm the Soul Eater second in command. You won't stand a chance. I ignored his haunts and rushed him with my sword. Less talking, more fighting. I swung my sword, but he blocked it. And he knocked me back, hard. Uh-oh, he's strong. This is gonna be my hardest fight yet. From day 95 to day 97, I continued my battle against the Shade. I could see why he was the Soul Eater's top henchman. He was really tough. Definitely the toughest of his minions I had fought so far. Then I realized I needed to get some distance from him. I ran back and got my crossbow, then started firing. It was just the advantage I needed. Using a combination of my crossbow and then my sword once he was weak enough for me to get close, I finally finished the Shade off. I did it! When the shade collapsed, it dropped a map to the nether portal. This is just what I need. I already knew where to go once I reached the nether, but now I know how to get there. The side of the map triggered a flashback. You have to do it, Zozo. No, stealing was one thing, but I don't want to hurt anyone. I won't help you burn down the village. They defied me. You would defy me too? If it means I don't have to hurt anyone, then yes, I quit. That was it. That was what made me stop working for the Soul Eater. I wasn't bad. I made the choice to be good. I have to defeat him and stop him from ever hurting anyone else again. Then he'll see that not only am I a good guy now, but good always wins. I'll make the Soul Eater eat his words. On day 98, I returned and found the home was fully fixed by my friends and I could prepare for battle right away. Only a few days left before the Soul Eater expects me to be dead meat. I'll have to be ready for him. As I was working on gathering diamonds and upgrading some more of my weapons, Wendy the Wisp came up to see me. Zozo, I made this for you. She handed me shark tooth arrows, crafted from the shark tooth I found. This is amazing, thank you. Good luck. I know you can do it. Next, Mage came to see me. I wasn't so sure about you when we first met, but I've watched you grow so strong and capable. You're going to beat the Soul Eater. I just know it. The Horseshoe Crab visited me next. I'm so happy that I met you. You're a hero, through and through. I hope you're right. Then a cake was brought out, and I knew everyone was sending me their best luck. There weren't any candles to blow out, but I made a wish anyway. I wish to do my best. On day 99, I have made my way through the forest, carefully following the instructions on the map, until I reached the nether portal. But it definitely didn't make me feel good to see that the portal was being guarded by a vicious gang of crakes that must have been working for the Soul Eater too. Why do so many people work for this guy? Does he just have really good dental or something? 
I was trying to figure out what I should do when the solution came right towards me. It was my friend, the Yeti, with his iron sword. Yes. Yeti, I never expected to see you here. You changed my life, Zozo. Since we met, and you taught me to stand up for myself. I've been traveling around, helping people out too. And now, I can do the same for you. Let me distract those crikes. That meanie, the Soul Eater, he's all yours. Without another word, the now brave and strong Yeti ran in and started battling the crates. He gave me the perfect opportunity to run up to the nether portal and jump right in. On day 100, I burst into the nether, ready to battle. My memories were starting to come back to me. I knew that the Soul Eater would be hiding in a nether fortress near here, amongst all that scary fire and lava. You can't hide, Soul Eater. I'm coming for you. I ran into the nether fortress. Remember that feeling, Zozo? Getting a little deja vu? We fought here once before. When you first started with all those silly notions about quitting, I hit you so hard you forgot who you were. This time, I'm gonna hit you so hard, you won't get up at all. Big talk, Soul Eater, but my memories are coming back. I worked for you for years. I know all your tricks, and I know who I am. I'm Zozo, and I'm a hero. Once a devil golem, always a devil golem. Let's just see about that. I tried to pull out my crossbow and get a lock on him, but he was too fast. He got up in my face, and I didn't have time to draw one of my weapons. We were about to throw down hand to hand. You know, Zozo, to begin with, I wanted to get you back. Now, I'm going to fire you! And he meant that literally, because he tried to push me into one of the many nether fire pits. If I hadn't dodged, I'd be done for. You can't fire me, Soul Eater. I quit! I fought back, unleashing my full force and applying all the knowledge and strength I'd gained over these past 100 days. I kept attacking, kept forcing him back, not even giving him time to strike back. Soon enough, he was exhausted and standing right on the edge of the lava sea. The Soul Eater knew he'd been defeated. But you can't push me in, right, Zozo? Because you're a hero now. And pushing someone into lava isn't what heroes do. I guess you were right about one thing, Soul Eater. Once a devil golem, always a devil golem. No! With one more strike, the Soul Eater fell back into the lava and he was gone forever. I was finally free. On day one, I spawned in as the Grim Reaper. Then I noticed I was tiny, and I only had three hearts. What is this nonsense? I looked around and saw that I was in front of a castle. Ooh, this looks interesting. I'll take a look inside. I opened the door and called out. Anybody home? Maybe one of my friends lived here or something. I started wandering around and found myself in a throne room. What is that? I saw a man with a mutant wither skeleton. He was holding a scythe. Wait, I think that's my scythe. How did you get it? The man screamed in rage and pointed at me. Destroy him. A bunch of zombies came out from the back room and I gasped in shock. Without even thinking, I fired an icy blast that froze some of the zombies solid. Huh, that's interesting. I guess this is because I'm as cold as death. I ran out the door and down the stairs as the zombies followed me. That was not what I was expecting. And why does that guy have an army of zombies? That's not right. I found a small cave and decided to sleep there for the night. Tomorrow, I'll find out what's going on. On day two, I left the cave to go exploring. I walked for half a day until I found my way to the Atom Forest. I don't really have a home, so I guess I'm gonna have to make one. I started collecting some wood to make a crafting table and a wooden pickaxe. After some additional mining and crafting, I had some simple stone tools and weapons. Well, it's better than nothing. I had been working so hard all day, so when I stopped, I realized I was hungry. What does a Grim Reaper eat? I found some cows and pigs and cooked up some food for myself. It didn't do anything to help. In fact, it made me feel sick. Gross, I need to find something else. I noticed that it had gotten dark. Suddenly, a group of zombies popped out and started attacking me. With my new stone sword, I was able to take them out easily. They had dropped some meat and I stared at it hungrily. Maybe this will help me? I ate the meat and sure enough, my hearts were restored. I feel much better now. I made it back to my base and worked on a few more things before heading to bed. On day three, I went back out to find more materials for the base. It was safe enough, but I wanted to make some improvements. It turned out to be a nice day. I hope nothing too crazy happens today. I realized I had spoken too soon because just then I heard an awful crash. 
I ran to see what the noise was when I saw a Dread Queen fighting a bunch of zombies. Hey, leave her be! I rushed forward with my weapons. The zombies started to attack me when I remembered my trick at the castle. I fired out some ice blasts and froze up some of those nasty zombies. The others noticed and started to run away. Nice job, Death. It's been a minute since I've seen you. Did you shrink? Who are you? I'm Famine. Do you know me? Uh, I'm sorry, no. Oh, this must have been Lord Terror's doing. I knew he was up to no good. I was so confused at this point. Famine could see that I was overwhelmed. You are the Grim Reaper, or Death. I'm Famine, and we have two friends, War and Pestilence. We establish order in the world. But Lord Terror, as he calls himself, started messing with stuff. He's been infiltrating the villages and turning people into undead. That's horrible. Those souls need to be freed and move on. I thought that's what you were planning, but nobody has seen you for a while. Now I know something bad happened. You're smaller and you don't look like yourself. This is a lot to take in. How about we get back to my base? It's not a castle, but it's safer than out here. Sure. Famine and I made our way back to my base, just in time for the sun to set. On days four to five, I helped Famine make a little home at my base. I was driven out of my home by the undead. I guess Lord Terror is getting more powerful as the days go on. The house wasn't too fancy, but Famine seemed to like it, and she thanked me. No problem, anything for a friend. I went out to look for some more supplies when I saw a group of skeletons near a cave entrance. I'm death, surely they won't want to harm me. As I approached, they seemed friendly, but then they started shooting me with their bows. Hey, we aren't enemies. Honestly, I didn't know anymore. I was just a baby after all. I used my sword to attack, and soon enough, they were all gone. Hey, what's that? I noticed a bow on the ground, and I picked it up. It had an enchantment of flame on it. Nice, this will come in handy. On day six to eight, while out in the forest near my base, I gathered some meat from some more cows and pigs. Famine got hungry a lot after all. I'm gonna keep working and getting stronger. Lord Terror doesn't stand a chance against me. Is that so? I looked, and to my surprise, it was Lord Terror. He had a few zombies around him. Let those innocent souls go. You don't have a right to keep them here. Lord Terror laughed and swung the scythe around. I'm the Lord of Death now, little reaper. I won your scythe fair and square. What are you talking about? He seemed tired of talking, so he swung at me instead. Whoa! He was fast. I tried to dodge him, but he kept getting hits in. I beat you once. I will beat you again. I gotta get out of here. I ran as fast as my little legs could carry me. As I did, I heard Lord Terror laughing from behind me. That's right, little reaper. Run away. I will see you soon enough. On days 9 to 10, I made it back to the base. Famine could tell I was hurt, and she tried her hardest to help me. It's okay, Death. You will grow stronger and eventually beat Lord Terror. He's just a silly little monster trying to steal other people's things. I felt a little bit better after our talk, but I still felt exhausted. Oh, I almost forgot. I have a surprise for you. She brought me outside to show me a statue she was beginning to make. Ta-da! It's great, Famine! Is it a tent? No, silly. Do you really not know what it is? I looked again. Can you tell what it is? I also made some other upgrades while you were gone. She showed me the lanterns and a small archery range. Wow, you've really outdone yourself. It's the least I can do for a friend. Famine was awesome. I was glad I was able to find her. I hoped our other friends were doing okay. I would go looking for them soon. On days 11 to 12, I had a vivid dream. I was a fully grown Grim Reaper with my scythe at my side. I was living in the castle that I had escaped from on day one. Everything is as it should be. Not quite. I looked and saw Lord Terror, except he looked like a normal villager. I believe we have a game that needs playing death. With his dark powers, Lord Terror began to steal away my energy and my ability. He shapeshifted into his mutant wither skeleton self as I became a sad little baby reaper. Ah! I woke up in horror at the nightmare I had just had. I rushed to Famine to tell her about it. She shook her head. So that's what happened. I knew you made a deal with a dying human, but I didn't know you lost all your power in the process. That can't be it. Why am I back, but as a baby? Why can he control the dead? 
Famine shook her head. Maybe our friends know. I think it's about time we go find them. On days 13 to 15, I went out to explore. I was hoping to find war or pestilence, but they didn't seem to be anywhere. I hoped they weren't captured or anything. I realized I was back in the area where I had seen famine for the first time. There were a bunch of zombies milling around still. I guess they just expected her to come back. Get lost! I drew my bow and defeated them one by one. I didn't realize it until now, but I was releasing their souls from their bodies. I was freeing them. Nice! I managed to release all their souls when I felt a power coursing through me. I grew in size and became an older Grim Reaper. I'm bigger and I have 30 hearts. I realized I could also now turn invisible for short periods. That'll come in handy. I can't wait to try this out later. On day 16 to 19, I found a cave and decided to mine for some more materials. This looks promising. Hopefully I can find some iron in here. As I was venturing deeper into the cave, I saw a group of skeletons standing right on top of an iron deposit. It looks like I'm gonna have to take care of that. I drew my bow. They noticed me immediately and began shooting. Come on guys, I just need some iron. After just a few more shots, they were all gone. Their bows and arrows scattered around me. I mined the iron without any more trouble and got to work. I smelted the iron into ingots with a furnace, then was able to make a new sword, pickaxe, and some other tools. Yes, things are looking up. On days 20 to 22, I started to head back to my base when I noticed I was being followed. I went invisible briefly and waited for them to approach. Then as the figure approached, I turned visible again and jumped out. Whoa, 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 <laughs> I'm a friend. He was a crimson wizard and the red of his outfit made me think of anger, which then made me think, are you war? In the flesh. Yeah, I thought you looked kind of different. You're uh, not as tall as you used to be. I told him what happened and he whistled. That sounds awful. Hopefully you can get your scythe and your castle back. Those are pretty sick. Thanks? No problem. I invited him back to my base and he happily agreed. And I thought my house was a fortress, you know, being war and all. But those pesky undead got inside and started breaking everything. So I left. Good thing I ran into you. We were nearly to the base when we saw Famine running toward us. Oh, hey, Famine! She didn't even acknowledge war. Death! No terror is outside. He is threatening to take down the base. Wait, war? Sheesh, it's like I'm invisible. Stay here. I'll go see what he wants. If I need help, I'll call for you. War and Famine got to catching up while I approached the entrance. Sure enough, Lord Terror was there with my scythe. I believe that scythe belongs to me. See now, little reaper. I won this fair and square. You agreed to the terms. I don't even remember what happened. And you're just a human. You can't be death. That's my calling. You're wrong. The witch gave me the ability to win this power. Witch? Lord Terror screamed and charged at me. I dodged him and used my Ice Blast ability to try to stop him. It didn't work for some reason. What in the world? He laughed and lunged at me again. I slashed him with my new iron sword. I actually managed to hit him and he looked at me in shock. I was about to hit him again when he slammed a scythe into the ground, pushing me back. I'll be back to finish you off. And with that, Lord Terror ran away. What a coward. I'll say. I looked and saw Warren Famine looking out from behind the trees. I did manage to wound him though, so that means I'm getting stronger. Yeah, but you have a lot of work to do. On days 23 to 26, I chatted with War about Lord Terror. You definitely need some upgrades if you're gonna fight Lord Terror and beat him. I can think of a few things that might be useful to you. Like what? Well, you definitely need to upgrade your sword. Iron is all right, but you need some diamonds and an enchanting table to improve your attack. Okay, where should I go? War told me all the places where I would find the supplies. It wasn't a short list. This might take a while. You want to defeat Lord Terror and get your scythe back, right? Of course I do. Then get to it. I started gathering materials for the enchanting table and managed to make one all by myself. Good job, Jeff. Thanks. If you think I'm doing a good job, be sure to join me on all my other adventures. Just search Z-O, Z-O. On days 27 to 31, I went to check on Famine. I hadn't seen her while I was gathering supplies, and I wanted to make sure she was okay. Hey, Famine, how are you liking your house? It's great. Look what I've been working on. She led me to the statue, which I could definitely tell was an hourglass. You've made some great progress. 
Yeah, well, I'm not quite there yet. I wanted to add something special on top. It's a surprise. Could you get some white and black wool for me? Sure. I made my way outside to find some sheep to bring back to the base. I found an abandoned village and spotted some sheep in pens. Perfect. As I went to collect them, I heard something approaching. A horde of zombies were coming toward me. They must have been the villagers that used to live here. You guys need to rest. And I'm so sorry Lord Terror is doing this to you. I used my weapons to release the souls from the undead. I was much more powerful and helped them all in just a few moments. Hopefully, you can all be at peace now. I gathered the sheep and managed to bring them all back to the base. It wasn't easy, but I knew that Famine would appreciate it. On days 32 to 35, I went to gather some more food for all of us. Pork seemed like a pretty safe bet. I know the pigs will be easy to find, but I need to wait until dark for the zombies. I decided to set up a little trap for them, and sure enough, they fell right into it. Impressive, Death. Who is that? You don't recognize my voice? Shame on you, old friend. Then I saw someone step out from behind the mushrooms. Of course I didn't notice her. She was a mushroom lord. She blended in. Pestilence. Did you shrink? Yeah, I shrunk. I told Pestilence what had happened, and she tissed in disapproval. Now, why would you do that, Death? You are too clever to be outsmarted and depowered by some lowly wither skeleton. That's the thing. I think Lord Terror cheated me. He mentioned something about a witch. I think that he somehow won because of her. Well, the only witch I know of is Famine. Hey. I'm just kidding. I've heard of an apothecary that lives here in the swamp. Maybe that's who he went to. This is great information. Pestilence agreed to take the food back to the base while I looked for the witch. Hopefully, she could give me more information about Lord Terror. On days 36 to 39, I journeyed further into the fungal patch in search of the witch. I thought for sure that I would find her, but I didn't see a house anywhere. Where in the world is she? I looked around some more when I saw a group of rabbits. They were acting kind of strange, a little too organized. Maybe they're her henchmen or something. I should follow them. Hmm. Actually, they're probably just stocking up on food. How oh, silly of me to think that they were working for the witch. Then I noticed that the rabbits all gathered together again. They seemed to be examining each other's food. Okay, I should maybe look somewhere else. Then the rabbits all bounded toward a large mushroom and disappeared. Whoa, where did they go? I quickly followed after them, running straight toward the mushroom. On days 40 to 43, I ran through the fungal patch chasing the rabbits. What in the world? Intruder! A large group of rabbits came bounding toward me. What are you doing in Our Lady's realm? Did you have an inquiry? Is this where the witch lives? The rabbits gasped. You dare call her such a rude name. She is an apothecary of great renown. Sorry, I, I just need answers. I don't mean her any harm. You look like you do. Then the rabbit started jumping at me. Hey! I didn't want to hurt them, so I just tried to swat them away as nicely as I could. Death? What are you doing here? I looked up to see a friendly witch. Friends, no need to harass Death. I I'm sure he has a reason for being here. The rabbit stopped attacking me and quickly surrounded the woman. Who are you? I'm Amelia. I wasn't expecting you for quite some time. I'm not here to collect your soul. I just need to know why you helped Lord Terror. Lord Terror? He stole my power and made me regenerate. He took my scythe and is using it to keep souls captive in their undead bodies. Amelia gasped and started to shake her head. <gasps> that was Logan Turner. I gave him a potion of luck. He said he needed it in order to fulfill his last dream before he passed. I had no idea he would use it for such an awful thing. She seemed genuinely upset. I can't undo what's been done, but maybe this can help you. She went inside her house and came out with a potion. What is this? A potion of strength. You will need that in order to get your scythe back. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you again, but hopefully not for a long time. She waved goodbye as I left her realm, returning to the swamp. On days 44 to 49, I returned to my base. Pestilence, famine, and war were having a good time together. I noticed they had improved their homes as well as the wall of the base. You've been busy. So have you, my friend. Did you find the witch? Apothecary, and yes, she was very nice. I told them the whole story and showed them the potion. That'll be useful later. I'm glad you were able to find her. Probably gave her quite a scare, though. 
Just a little bit. We all laughed and chatted for a little bit before Famine jumped up. Oh, come look at the statue. I went to look and sure enough, Famine had outdone herself. On top of the hourglass was a skull that looked just like my face. Whoa, it's amazing. You've been a great friend to us, Death. It's the least we can do. We admired the statue together for a little while longer and then went to bed. On days 50 to 53, I woke up to a loud crash. I hurried outside to see what it was and there were zombies everywhere. I could see Lord Terror standing on the edge of the wall. Come and fight me yourself, Logan. Don't call me that. He snarled at me and then swung the scythe. It nearly knocked me over, but it also knocked out some of the undead. Time to be freed, my friends. I used my iron sword on the group of undead, freeing them from their cursed bodies. It took a little while, but I eventually got them all. You can all be at peace now. Just then, I felt a pain in my back. I grew taller and gained more hearts. I looked at my back to see what the pain was and realized that I had grown dark feathery wings. Whoa, this is amazing. I flew up for a minute to survey the damage. This is gonna take some time to fix. Death. I looked and saw famine and pestilence running toward me. I lowered myself to the ground. What's wrong? Lord Terra took war. The undead were just a distraction. No! I slumped to the ground. I thought I could protect everyone, but Lord Terror was too clever. He needed to pay. On days 54 to 57, we all worked hard to fix the base. We gathered supplies, made the walls taller, and added extra security measures, including a small moat. After working all day, we sat down to chat about our next move. There's no doubt that Lord Terror took war to the castle. Why do you say that? Oh yeah, you don't remember. There's a massive dungeon in the basement. It has cages, traps, and all sorts of things. We actually used it to meet there sometimes for brunch. Sounds lovely. It was. We should do it again soon. Yeah, cleared her throat. <clears throat> Sorry, but he'll be there for sure. There is a back entrance where we would come in. Quicker that way. Pestilence gave me directions, and I wrote them down. I needed to find our friend before Lord Terror did something awful. But first, I needed to prepare. On days 58 to 62, I went mining for more diamonds. I needed to make some better armor and weapons for myself since I had no idea what I might face at the castle. I wasn't having any luck and was about to go search another cave when I saw a glimmer just up ahead. Diamonds! I walked forward and felt something fall on me from above. It was a huge hairy spider and he had brought some friends. I'm a friend, no need to hurt me. The spiders kept attacking and I had no choice but to defend myself. Soon enough, they were all gone. Now, on to the diamonds. The deposit was actually really large and I managed to make armor, plus a new sword and a pickaxe. Sweet! I felt just a little bit more ready to go save war. On day 63 to 66, I noticed that part of the statue had been damaged during the fight. I didn't want to finish it without war, so I just admired it with all its burns and marks. I'll save you, war. I promise. Hello, Mr. Death, sir. I looked and saw some of Amelia's rabbit friends gathering around me. You aren't going to jump on me again, are you? No, sir, we need your help. Amelia has been captured by that Lord Terror Man. We don't have the strength to get her back. Did you get her back? The rabbits looked very concerned. Of course, he has my friend too. He's probably keeping them in the same place. Oh, thank you, Mr. Death, sir. I'll be back soon. In the meantime, you can wait here with my friends. They can help you. They agreed to stay while I rescued Amelia. This was going to be a little bit more difficult, but I was determined. And hey, if you like what you've seen so far, don't forget to subscribe. We love having you here with us. On day 67 to 70, I followed the directions to the back door entrance of the dungeon. It was hiding behind some trees and bushes. Good job me for thinking ahead. I entered quietly and made my way down, down, down. I didn't hear much for a while, so I thought I was in the clear. What was that? I turned a corner and saw a swarm of zombies blocking the hallway. They saw me and started ambling toward me. Get back! I used my wings to fly over them. I fired my ice blast at them from the air, freezing them solid. Peace, friends. I lowered myself in front of a door and opened it carefully. Death! It's about time you showed up. War and Amelia were stuck in cages, and I quickly broke the bars to free them. How did you know I was here? Your loyal little friends told me. They really are the best, aren't they? 
Sure are. Let's get out of here. On day 71 to 74, we made our way back up toward the back door. Then I noticed a lever I hadn't seen before. It was hiding behind a pillar. I wonder what this opens. Is that a wise idea? It was my house. I'm sure it'll be fine. I released the lever and the trap door opened. I went inside and saw a chest in a small room. <gasps> There's a chest. Well, what are you waiting for? Open it. I opened it and inside were netherite ingots, gold, diamonds, and some other ingredients for enchanting. Wow. I climbed back up and showed war. Hey, you can finally make that sword we've been talking about. Right. We continued out following the stream of daylight. On days 75 to 78, we finally made it out. Thank goodness. I was beginning to think that Lord Terror would hold us there forever. Not so fast. Lord Terror came around the corner, scythe in hand. You dare take my witch and my strongest soldier? I am not a witch. Then I would never fight for you. We brandished our weapons as Lord Terror snarled. Why won't you just die? He swung the scythe, but I managed to dodge. I then swung my sword and hit Lord Terror. He stepped back, then swung again. He was fast, but I was an equal opponent now. I could sense his fear. No, 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 no! He slammed the hilt of the scythe into the ground and blasted us back. Somehow, through some dark magic, he stole my potion of strength and drank it. On day 79 to 84, we all watched in horror as Lord Terror grew and grew and grew. He was enormous. Oh no, we need to go. Lord Terror laughed as I picked up my friends and flew away with them. This has to end soon or Lord Terror is going to take over everything. On days 85 to 89, we arrived safely back at my base. Famine and Pestilence came running out to greet us. Okay, you better not cry, because I'm not good at dealing with emotion. Amelia saw her rabbits, and they all jumped for joy. It seemed like things were at least a little normal for now. Death, come! We need to fix that sword of yours. War took me to upgrade my sword, and then showed me how to enchant it. Wow, this will really help, War. Thanks for everything you've done. Hey, I love conflict, but not when it involves my friends. It's the fire aspect in Chamon. It'll give your sword a burning edge. This will help you to get your scythe back. How? Lord Terror doesn't always have the scythe with him. He likes to hang it up in the main corridor and just admire it. I heard him talking about it while we were captured. This is great information, War. If you can fight him off long enough to get the scythe back, that'll be the key to stopping Lord Terror for good. I agreed and went to show my friends. They oohed and awed before Famine spoke up. Come and see what Pestilence and I did with the help of the rabbits. They took me over to the statue, which now had wildflowers growing all around the base. On top was the skull, now with flowers and a touch of flames. Guys, this looks awesome. You are the Lord of Death, but we know you have a soft side. I do like flowers. I stared at it in awe. I really did have amazing friends. On days 90 to 94, I traveled back to the castle to retrieve my scythe. If I did it while Lord Terror was unaware, surely I would be able to defeat him. As I approached the castle, I decided to just hide next to one of the pillars inside the throne room and stake it out. I could see Lord Terror back to his normal size. Thank goodness, he was standing around, admiring the scythe. That's mine. I waited for a long time before he fell asleep. I quietly opened the door and snuck past him, grabbing the scythe from the wall. I expected to grow into my full form, but something was wrong. Intruder! Lord Terror started to charge at me. I brandished my new sword and smacked him backwards. He brought out another potion and drank it before charging at me. He was incredibly fast and I could barely see him as he struck me. Oh no! My hearts were fading fast since I couldn't defend myself. I ran away, taking the scythe with me. It won't work for you, little reaper. You are too late. I didn't know what he meant, but I flew away before he had a chance to attack me again. I need to fix whatever he did to my scythe. Otherwise, I'm dead meat. On days 95 to 97, I brought my scythe back to the base and had war examine it. I don't know what to tell you. It looks normal to me. Maybe Amelia will know. I took it to her and she examined it. This is my fault. Lord Terror forced me to make a binding spell. He is now bound to the scythe by an enchantment. How do I break it? I'll have to make a counter spell, but it will probably take a few days. 
We might even break it. Do it. She worked tirelessly trying to fix the scythe, and I did what I could to assist her. I really need this to work. On day 98, I helped Amelia with what I could, but she said I needed to wait for the result. I made my way outside and admired our base and the statue. It had been a difficult journey so far, but I was glad that I had found my friends, made some new ones, and grown stronger. Even if my scythe didn't work, I knew that I would defeat Lord Terror somehow. Hey, we're really glad that you've been here on this journey too. Be sure to subscribe and search for ZOZO for more videos. Also, comment below on what my next adventure should be. I can't wait to see what you say. On day 99, I went to look for Amelia. She looked a little discouraged. I don't know if the spell worked. You'll need to wield it in battle to see. Well, then I guess it's time to go fight Lord Terror. I'm sorry about all the trouble I've caused. If it wasn't for me, none of this would have happened. Maybe, but I'm glad it did. I got to find my old friends again, build an awesome base, and meet you. You're an awesome apothecary, Amelia. Which? But who's keeping track? Go give him, well, you know. I smiled as I flew off towards the castle, scythe in hand. As I landed on the steps, the door was open for me. The undead were nowhere to be seen, but Lord Terror stood on the steps, sword in hand, potion in the other. You can't defeat me. We'll see about that. I took my scythe and slammed the hilt into the ground, causing everything to shake. I felt a surge of power, and I was connected to my weapon again. I grew taller, my hearts increased, and my wings spanned further. You have cheated death, Logan Turner, and for that, you must pay. Lord Terror drank a potion, and he grew taller. As our weapons met, there was a brilliant burst of light. It's not fair. I am Lord Terror, the new Grim Reaper. I earned that title. I lifted myself into the air, letting the scythe swing down with a mighty force. You stole that title! I am the rightful Grim Reaper, and now you must move on! Lord Terror screamed before the scythe made contact, and in a burst of smoke, he was gone! On day 100, I flew back to the base triumphant and glorious in my final form. Everyone cheered as I descended, and they even tried to hug me. You're our hero! The world is finally right again! And that was the honest truth. On day one, I spawned in into the Badlands as a shapeshifter. Whoa, that's a cool special ability. I wonder how far I can go with it. But I didn't have long to think about that because a gang of wither skeletons with bows and swords showed up and started chasing me. Darn it, I wish I could go faster, but I'm only a baby shapeshifter and that means I've only got three hearts. But even though I was weak, that didn't mean I couldn't shapeshift. I hid behind a rock and turned into a rabbit. Nobody ever suspects a rabbit. The wither skeletons kept searching until they found my little rabbit self, acting casually. The leader of the wither skeletons immediately clocked me. There he is, boys. Grab him. The wither skeletons immediately surrounded me, giving me no chance to escape. Uh -oh. Wait, how did you know it was me? There are no rabbits in the Badlands. You've still got a lot to learn, shapeshifter. Let's take him to the jail. On day two, the wither skeletons dragged me over to the Badlands jail. You can't do this, I'm too young to go to jail. But that didn't seem to persuade them. They threw me in a cell with another prisoner, a quill beast. I had to figure out what was going on. Hey, Mr. Quill Beast, I'm Zozo. What's your name and what are you in for? The name's Quilliam. I don't know why I'm here. I was just wandering the Badlands when suddenly the wither skeletons arrested me and dragged me here. Don't worry, Quilliam. I have an idea for how we can both escape. No offense, Zozo, but I really don't know how a rabbit could launch a jailbreak. That's the thing. I'm not a rabbit. I'm a shapeshifter. I used my power to turn into a wither skeleton, just like the ones who ran the Badlands prison. We used one of Quilliam's quills to pick the lock, and the two of us walked down the hall together. Yes. Another wither skeleton stopped us on the way. Hey, where are you two going? I'm just taking this prisoner to a different cell block. Nothing to see here. Mm, fine, I suppose. On your way. In my wither skeleton disguise, Quilliam and I slipped out of the Badlands prison without a second thought. That was amazing, Zozo. You saved both of us in there. These shapeshifting skills really come in handy. I can't wait to get better at them. On day three, I decided to continue my escape and make my way into the jungle. It'd be way harder for the bad guys to find me amongst all these dense trees. But if I really want to fit in here, I can't just be a wither skeleton. I need a real jungle disguise. 
That's why I shapeshifted into an orangutan. Orangutan is Malay for person of the forest, so it makes for a perfect jungle disguise. All this shapeshifting was hungry work, so I explored the forest and gathered up some tasty melons to eat. Mmm, delicious and nutritious. But while foraging, I encountered a mysterious wooden villager meditating in a clearing. Sorry to interrupt you, wooden villager, but is everything okay? Everything is more than okay, now that you're here, Zozo. What? How did you know my name? I know many things. I am Ama, the jungle mystic. I have long traveled this jungle in search of a hero to whom I can reveal the great truth of the world. Do you believe you are that hero? Well, I'd like to be, for sure. Good. Then follow me. There is much to learn. On days four to five, Ama, the jungle mystic, led me deeper into the forest, where he started to explain what was going on here. So does the problem here have to do something with the wither skeletons? No, the wither skeletons are irrelevant to the true issue here, Zozo. You see, this forest is overrun with vicious tribal gremlins. Alone, they may not look like much, but together, they can pose a major threat. For the sake of the world's peace and safety, we must see to it that they are defeated. We have less than 100 days to exterminate them before things really get out of hand. Wow, that sounds like a tall order. These tribal gremlins must be really scary. How should I fight them? Don't worry about fighting them just yet. I'll be able to help you plan the best course of action. For now, take these tools and start building yourself a base. Ama the Jungle Mystic gave me a set of stone tools, and I left him to go find a clearing in the jungle where I could start building my base. I immediately started cutting down trees for wood and mining for stone. My base was already coming along nicely when suddenly a wither skeleton scouting party appeared out of the woods. You've got to be around here somewhere. Come on, boys. Let's find this slippery little crate. I needed to think fast. Obviously, a rabbit was no good, and they'd probably be expecting another wither skeleton. What could I turn into that would save me? Oh, wait. I've got it. I shapeshifted into a wither boss and floated over to the wither skeletons. What are you boys doing out here slacking off? This is unacceptable. But boss, somebody escaped to prison. We need to go track them down. Forget about one lousy prisoner. Go back and stand guard to make sure more don't get out. And that's an order. Yes, with the boss, sir. The wither skeletons turned tail and marched out of the forest. I breathed a sigh of relief and my shape-shifting skills paid off because I earned enough XP to level up. Yes. Whoa, I have six hearts now and I can shift for longer. This is awesome. On day six to day eight, I took the form of a baboon so I could finish building the house and it looked amazing. I decided to explore for a bit. As I was walking through the jungle, I noticed something a little strange. Wait, where are all the animals? Is this something to do with the tribal gremlins that Ama the Jungle Mystic was telling me about? As I was gathering some coal, a stray ran past me. Whoa there, everything okay, stray? There's no time to talk. I need to keep running. Get out of my way. You're safe here, explain yourself. My town was destroyed by the Red Nightmare and his forces. He's taking over everything. If you had any brains in that baboon head of yours, you'd run while you still can. And then he ran off, leaving me confused. Red Nightmare, I'd never heard of that. So I decided to find Ama the Jungle Mystic again and ask him what he knew. Ah yes, the Red Nightmare. He's another terrible force associated with those tribal gremlins I told you about. Perhaps it's time to arm yourself against the coming struggles. If you make your way to the snowy tundras and find the Frost Weaver, you'll be able to obtain a mace by defeating it. Go now, the tribal gremlin threat advances ever closer. On days nine to 10, I shifted into a snow leopard so I could both move faster and stand the cold. Then I made my way out to the snowy tundra to begin my search. I'm gonna find you, Frost Weaver. But what I didn't expect was that the Frost Weaver would find me first. It was huge and ferocious, and it attacked me as soon as it saw me. He spit poison webs at me, which really slowed me down. I figure I can't ask you nicely to hand over the mace then. The Frost Weaver didn't feel like chatting with me. Instead, it relentlessly attacked, knocking off a couple of my hearts. There was no way I could defeat a monster this powerful. But to my luck, I suddenly saw a snow golem running towards me. Golems have a natural protection instinct, so I was really in luck here. Don't worry, kid. I'll give you a hand. The snow golem joined me in the fight, and we were able to turn the tide. Soon, the Frostweaver was defeated, and I had picked up the special mace he dropped. 
Thanks for helping me there, Snow Golem. I really owe you one. Think nothing of it. Why don't you come back to my cave with me? My family and I can make you some dinner. So we traveled back to the ice cave where the snow golem and his family, some baby snow golems, lived. He gave me some mushroom stew that helped replenish my missing hearts. I suppose you're out here fleeing from the red nightmare. That's why most people come to brave these frosty wastes. The red nightmare? As in the tribal gremlins? Tribal gremlins? I've never heard of any such thing. How strange. Well, I better go ask Ama about it. Thanks for the stew. On days 11 to 12, I assumed the form of a formidable Komodo dragon and returned to my base. Ama, the jungle mystic, was waiting for me. Ama, something isn't right. I got the mace, but while I was out in the snowy tundra, I met a snow golem who knew about the red nightmare, but not the tribal gremlins. How could that be? I wouldn't worry about it, Zozo. Instead, go to this cave I've marked out on your map. You can mine some iron ore there and perhaps use it to upgrade your armor or gear. It will be vital in the coming struggles. Once you have your iron, you can begin the attack on the tribal gremlin camp to the left of here. Okay, if you say so, Ama. Still, it's a little weird to say the least. I went to the cave that Ama marked out for me. I made my way in and started mining the iron ore. There was a decent amount of it down there, but not enough to do what I really needed. I did grab the extra coal that was there, though. Then, when I left the cave, I was ambushed by a lurker, one of the nastiest little creatures in the jungle. Thank goodness I have my mace with me. With one swing of my mace, I'd smushed that nasty creature and was off on my way to the tribal gremlin camp. From day 13 to day 15, I came across a path. This must be the way to the village. I took the form of a gremlin so nobody would really notice me, and I followed the path. I arrived at the tribal gremlin camp. It was basically a huge village made of tree houses in the jungle. I was expecting it to be scary, but honestly, all the tribal gremlins seemed weirdly peaceful. I decided to talk to one of them to see what was going on. Hey, uh, fellow gremlin, you looking forward to causing some more chaos in the forest today? He just looked confused. Chaos, what are you talking about? I turned and saw a very chubby, stern-looking tribal gremlin chief sitting behind me. There will be no chaos around here, boy. We need to stay organized if we want to have any hope of defeating the Red Nightmare. The tribal gremlins wanted to fight the Red Nightmare too? I thought they were in league with them. Nothing was making sense. I needed to go back to my base and talk to Ama the Jungle Mystic immediately. From day 16 to day 19, I returned to my base. I took the long way back through the jungle, trying to figure out some kind of reasonable explanation for what had happened. Could Ama had been lying to me this whole time? But why? When I arrived back at my base, there was a tribal gremlin waiting for me. He looked like he was in a panic. Stranger, we need your help. Something terrible has been attacking our village. Something terrible? I'll come right away. But by the time I arrived at the village, it looked like the worst had already happened. The village was in ruins. The tribal gremlin chief was dead. Only his mask remained. And standing in the middle of it all was Ama. Ama, how could you? The tribal gremlins are friendly and peaceful. To you, perhaps, but to my plans, they were a frustrating inconvenience. What do you mean, your plans? I never told you my full name, did I? I'm a shapeshifter like you, you see. Some call me Ama, but my true name is Amogolish, perhaps better known as... Suddenly, Ama shapeshifted into a huge, blood-red creature, the true Amogolish. Wait, you're the Red Nightmare? Very clever, Zozo. I thought I could trick you into destroying the tribal gremlins for me, but it seems you're completely useless. So you can be destroyed with them! I was so angry that I turned into a huge vile ogre and charged at Amogolish, the Red Nightmare! He would never use me to do evil! But I underestimated how strong he was! With one strike, he knocked me down from the bridge and everything faded to black! From day 20 to day 22, I woke at the bottom of what remained of the destroyed tribal gremlin village. I'd failed. I'd let them all down. But thankfully, at least some of them had survived Amogolish's monstrous attack. But now we have no place to live. We can't just survive out here in the jungle. He'll pick us off one by one. That's when I turned into a horse. 
Nobody is living out in the jungle. Hop on my back, and I'll let you come live at my base. We can work together and stop a Mogulish from destroying anywhere else. One by one, I took all the remaining tribal gremlins back to my base and started building a barracks for them. If a Mogulish thinks he can destroy us all, we're not gonna go down without a fight. From day 23 to day 26, I traveled out to the desert. That jungle humidity can be killer sometimes. I decided to turn myself into a roadrunner so I could run extra fast across the sand. Meep meep. It feels good to feel the wind blow between my feathers. But I had to stop when I saw a sun god being attacked by a gang of enhanced aeropedes. They must have been sent by a Mogulish. Don't worry, sun god. I'm here to help. I ran in and started circling around the aeropedes, distracting them from attacking the sun god. That gave the sun god a chance. I unleash the power of the sun. He sent out a powerful sunblast, hitting and vaporizing the aeropedes. And he never could have done it without me. I never could have done it without you, Zozo. In exchange, I give you the blessing of the sun. From now on, you will be stronger and faster in daylight. You will also gain a few hearts. That's such a cool power. Thank you, Sun God. And the two extra hearts will come in handy. May my blessings be with you. From day 27 to day 31, I went back to the jungle. I missed all those lush green trees. On the way back to the base, I found some sheep wandering around the jungle. They seemed lost, so I decided to take a stone guard form and shepherd them back to my base. When they were back, I started to build a pen for them. Now I can have as much wool as I want. This is perfect. I also decided to make a bigger wall around my base to protect me, the sheep, and my tribal gremlin guest from Amogalish and his minions. Meanwhile, in Amogalish's evil lair, he was meeting with his deadliest warrior, the behemoth, a huge demon knight. What would you have me do, master? I thought this Zozo could be useful, but it seems he's just a thorn in our sides. If we are to dominate this world, he and those who ally with him must be destroyed. Make it so. Yes, my master. I will destroy him personally. From day 32 to day 35, I decided I'd wander the plains in search of new allies and weapons. I needed to figure out how to defeat a Mogulish. Because I didn't want to get attacked by any monsters on my journey, I decided to shift into a mutant skeleton. Nobody would mess with that. Stop right there, monster. I turned and saw a gang of armed villagers ready to fight. They started firing arrows and I was forced to dodge as fast as I could. Wait, stop. I'm not a monster. I'm Zozo. I'm just a shapeshifter. That got the villagers to calm down. They lowered their weapons and began to murmur amongst themselves before turning back to me. Come with us, Zozo. We want to take you to our leader, the great King Midas, the ruler of gold. They led me back to their village, where Midas was waiting for me in a golden throne in the middle of the village. He was certainly an impressive sight. Ah, so my men brought you to me. There must be a reason. Why are you here, my boy? I'm trying to find a way to slay a Mogulish and get revenge for the tribal gremlins. Correct answer. Amalgalish, the Red Nightmare, has troubled our kingdom for generations. Me and my ancestors have tried to gather information about him for years, and I believe soon we will have the answers. When that time comes, come back to me. From day 36 to day 39, I turned myself into a scarecrow, just for fun, and entered the mine in the village. I mined iron to complete my new set of tools and armor. And I got really lucky, cause it wasn't just iron ore I found, I also found some diamonds. Not enough to craft just yet, but they were definitely worth keeping in my inventory for a rainy day. Though the most exciting thing I found down in that mine shaft was a dusty old book containing an unbreakable enchantment, which would make my new items unbreakable. I crafted a full set of iron tools, iron weapons, and iron armor before returning back to my base to rest. But sadly, there would be no rest. When I got back to my base, an Aztec warrior was already there, waiting for me. King Midas sent me to collect you. He wishes to speak to you about a truly grave matter. Then I suppose I better come along. From day 40 to day 43, I returned to the village to meet with King Midas. I wondered what had gotten him so worried, aside from the fact that I'd now shapeshifted into a gorilla for toughness. Zozo, I'm glad you're safe. Of course, your highness. Why wouldn't I be safe? 
My spies have gotten word of a terrible development in the war against Amalgalish. He has summoned his most dangerous minion, the Great Behemoth, and he has given him the instruction to destroy you personally. Don't worry, King Midas. I've gotten a lot tougher than I used to be. I bet I could kick this behemoth guy's booty. Why don't you say that to my face, weakling? I turned and saw the behemoth was standing right behind me while the villagers fled in every direction. He was even bigger and tougher than I'd imagined. I charged up towards him and used all my gorilla strength to deliver a mighty punch. But the behemoth just shrugged it off. He hit me back and sent me skidding across the village square. Take this new form, my boy, the Gold Golem, and use it in my name. With my new Gold Golem strength, I pulled out my mace and attacked the behemoth. Somehow, he effortlessly blocked every hit and started rampaging around the village. I need to get out of here. I'm still not strong enough to beat even the henchmen yet. So, I fled the village while the villagers tried desperately to stop behemoth. From day 44 to day 49, I returned to my base, feeling so ashamed of myself for running away that I turned myself into a blobfish. I don't deserve to call myself a hero. I left all those poor villagers to fend for themselves. I'm a zero. As I was moping, none other than King Midas turned up, having survived the previous battle. Zozo, I need to call on you yet again. I don't deserve you, King Midas. I was a coward. I ran away. Don't focus on the past, Zozo. We're not going there. I'm here because I have some important knowledge. There are legends of a sacred item, a mithril battle axe, that can be used to defeat the Red Nightmare. A mithril battle axe? But I already have a sword and a mace, and neither of them help. The Mithril Battle Axe is more than just a weapon, Zozo. It's supernatural. It can give its users immense power, even granting them wishes. But it is legendarily hard to obtain. You will either need to find one or make one from Mithril Ore. The mountains would be the best place to begin your search. From day 50 to day 53, I decided to take the form of a mountain troll and go searching through the mountains for information on the mithril hammer. Maybe if I find it, I can regain my honor after running away from Behemoth. The way up the mountain was tough. At the top, I searched and searched until I found a secret cave tucked away under one of the mountains. It seemed like the kind of place where something important might be hiding away. I put up some torches to light my way inside of the cave, but sadly I didn't find any mithril or a mithril battle axe in there. But I did find a book, labeled The Legend of Amogolish. Hey, that's the guy I'm fighting. A book described how Amogolish is an ancient evil who has tried to take over the world many times. But only someone who is of pure heart with a perfect weapon will be able to put him down for good and save everyone. Maybe I do have a shot after all. With at least some extra knowledge, I started heading back to my base. The way down was just as treacherous as the way up, but I eventually made it. When I reached the jungle again, I heard some commotion and I saw a Clink fighting a whole gang of scary jungle spiders. Don't worry, Clink, I'll help you. But by the time I reached him, he'd already defeated all the jungle spiders without breaking a sweat. He was clearly a lot stronger than I was. That was amazing, Mr. Clink. Wanna come back to my base? I need someone to help train me how to fight like you. Sorry, buddy, but I'm not the teaching type. Old Clink is too free-spirited to ever be tied down like that. Good luck with whatever you're doing, though. From day 54 to day 57, having been rejected by Clink, I continued back to my base. Well, at least this day can't get any worse. You have a big storm coming, Zozo. I turned and saw that literally the last person I wanted to see right now was standing right behind me. Behemoth, a Mogulish's number one goon! Oh no, not you again! I believe we have some unfinished business. Square up and prepare to meet your doom! I shifted into my gold golem form and pulled out my mace. This time, I was going to win! I charged straight at him with impressive speed, and with all my might, I swung the mace right into his face! And it had no effect. I still wasn't anywhere near strong enough to fight Behemoth. And all I could do was run away while he laughed at me! Meanwhile, back at Amogolish's evil lair, he was receiving information from his top advisor, the impish Pixen. Tell me, Pixen, how goes the war effort? Are our forces winning? 
We've crushed resistance to the east. Our Wither Skeleton army has been successful in raiding the villages to the west. Soon, I'm sure, the north and south will fall too. And what of Zozo? Has Behemoth destroyed that little brat yet? Soon, my lord. Behemoth says that our mission will be even easier than he thought. Delightful. Just delightful. On day 58 to day 62, I returned to my base, feeling a little down in the dirt. So I turned myself into a swamp pig. I'm so ashamed of myself. It feels like I can't do anything right. But when I got back, I was so happy to see that the tribal gremlins had increased the size of my base. They built new rooms and a whole new floor. It's the least we could do since you let us stay here with you, Zozo. I was so touched by their kindness that I wanted to do something for them in return. I'd build a statue, but not just any statue, a tribute to the fallen tribal gremlin chief. I started collecting all the proper material when I happened upon an abandoned diamond mine out in the jungle. I wonder if there are still diamonds down there. I went in and started to mine until I finally found enough diamonds to craft a pair of diamond armor pieces, a pickaxe, helmet, pants, and some cool boots. It isn't much, but it'll certainly help. From day 63 to day 66, one of the tribal gremlins approached me. Zozo, I think I know where you might be able to find a mithril battle axe like the one you were looking for. There's a special cave out in the desert, one that's sacred to my people. We might be able to find it together. That sounds like an excellent idea, tribal gremlin. Let's do it. We set off together until we reached the desert. With my shape-shifting powers growing by the day, I decided to shift into a guster so I could fit into the desert environment. After two days of walking, we finally found the cave. It looked deep and dark, and as I stepped forward to enter, the tribal gremlin stopped me. Wait, Zozo, I just remembered something important. You can't go in the cave, not yet. But why not? We really need that mithril battle axe, tribal gremlin. But you need to obtain a soul heart first. I've heard legends that those who enter the cave without one lose their souls, so we need to seek one out. Yeah, now that you mention it, that does seem like a pretty solid call. From day 67 to day 70, the tribal gremlin went home, and I continued exploring the desert, hoping to find a soul heart. It's a shame they don't just hand out those things, huh? Suddenly, I was distracted from my search as a coyote running towards me. He looked really worried. Hey, stranger, mind lending me a hand? There's a nasty Sudaramu bothering me and my coyote brothers. Sure thing. Maybe I can help defuse the situation. I ran after the coyote until I found a group of coyotes being attacked by a huge Sudoramu who was clawing at them. He looked like he was in a really bad mood. Sudoramu, stop bothering these coyotes. Mind your own business, fool. This is between me and the coyotes. The second you start bothering people, it is my business. Time to fight. I ran to the Sudoramu and began to fight. He was tough, but he didn't seem like he really wanted to destroy me. He just liked fighting people. So I gave him a good fight. Every time he swung his claws at me, I was able to dodge, then hit back. My hits barely bothered him, but he seemed like he enjoyed having the exercise. Yeah, that was a good fight. I like your style, man. You're a pretty good fighter yourself, Sudoramu. How about instead of fighting random coyotes, you go up against a real opponent? Like helping me take on that demon, a Mogulish. Now that sounds like a good time. From day 71 to day 74, after not finding anything in the desert other than a cave I couldn't enter, I returned to the base. Only to find that Behemoth was already there and he was annihilating my base. By the time I got back, half of the base had been destroyed and he was attacking the tribal gremlins trying to rest there. Sozo, you're back, good. I was getting bored destroying all your friends. Behemoth, you monster! You're going down for this! Try me. I transformed into a Vex, pulled out my mace again, and attacked Behemoth. My rage fueled me, and this time, as I attacked him, it looked like I was actually doing some damage. You've improved, Zozo, I'll give you that. But you're still nothing compared to me. Behemoth hit me back, stunning me and taking down several of my hearts. And while I was stunned, he grabbed one of the tribal gremlins and ran off with him. Gremlin, no! But there was nothing I could do. After I got my strength back, I teamed up with the other gremlins to rebuild the destroyed sections of my base and create a new guard tower to watch out for any future intruders. At a Mogulish's lair, he was laughing with glee as his army of monsters and skeletons prepared themselves for the next battle. It is almost time. Soon I will wipe out the resistance and all will be mine. 
From day 75 to day 78, King Midas once again arrived at my base, carrying a gift. Zozo, I have heard about your recent losses and your valiant attempts to get your hands on the Mithril Battle Axe. In the meantime, please, as a token of my gratitude for all the work you've done, take this. Oh, wow, King Midas, thank you! What is this? It's a Sword of Undying, my old battle weapon from my adventuring days. It's not the Mithril Battle Axe, but this is a powerful, well-forged weapon. I believe Behemoth keeps his own private lair out in the plains. Perhaps you should go show him how well you can use this new weapon. From day 79 to day 84, I arrived at Behemoth's lair out on the plains with my Sword of Undying, ready to do battle! I stormed in, ran past the skeleton soldiers, and saw that Behemoth was waiting for me! This is it! Zozo! I've gotten bored of playing with my food! You won't be leaving this lair! And when I've destroyed you, the Master will give me power and riches! Your creep of a Master is never going to see you again, Behemoth! Skeletons, grab this fool! Skeletons surrounded me, but I managed to take them down without much effort. I focused on Behemoth next. Sword in hand, we fought. Behemoth was still incredibly strong, but I felt like I was finally ready to take him on. But as the fight went on, even though I was doing some good damage, Behemoth started to turn the tide. He fought harder and harder, hitting me again and again, watching my hearts drop. Even with the regeneration and extra absorption health the Sword of Undying gave me, I was still losing this fight! Everything I'd worked for was about to be for nothing! You've been amusing, Zozo, but I won't miss you when you're gone! Just as Behemoth was about to finish me off, one of the walls of his lair exploded, and Sudoramu broke in to save the day! Zozo, eat this! He threw me a golden apple. I'd never seen one like it before, and I immediately took a bite. Immediately, everything changed. I could feel myself getting bigger and stronger, and not just regenerating hearts, but doubling them. With the 16 hearts, I shifted into ultimate gold golem, and with the Sudoramu at my side, I was ready to finish this. The two of us attacked the behemoth together, giving him no chance to take us out. I climbed to the top of the gate wall and jumped on the behemoth, swinging my sword at his head. He was defeated once and for all! I looked and saw that the destroyed behemoth had dropped a soul heart onto the ground. Wow. Now that was a good fight. Say, what's that thing he dropped? Sudoramu, that's our ticket to the big time! From day 85 to day 89, while still out in the plains, I shapeshifted into a double-headed vile ogre. I stumbled upon some clay and dug it up to use on the tribal gremlin chief statue. This is gonna look awesome, and I bet my tribal gremlin roommates will really appreciate it too. I returned to the base and completed the statue. Seeing it there inspired me and reminded me of what really mattered, all the innocent people I was fighting for. With the statue done, I set off for the desert with the behemoth soul heart in my inventory. I could finally enter the sacred cave and obtain the mithril battle axe. It would be a great day! But when I entered, things weren't so easy. There were husks everywhere, and just as I was about to clear them all, a terrifying jabberwock jumped out of the cave and started attacking me. I needed to pull out King Midas's sword to fight him off, and even then, it wasn't easy. It was like nothing has been easy for me these last few months. But with the Jabberwock Cave Guardian defeated, I saw it there, waiting for me. The Mithril Battle Axe that would solve all of our problems. I picked it up and felt its power surging through my hands. Ignites and knocks back targets. Well, that is useful. Things are looking up at last. From day 90 to day 94, I emerged from the cave with the Mithril Battle Axe, wondering what I'd use it for first, when I saw that a Mogulish was standing right in front of me. Hello again, Zozo. Think I'd let you get away with destroying my most powerful henchmen? For that, I'm going to destroy you myself. I didn't feel like talking to this monster. Instead, with the Mithril Battle Axe in hand, I charged at him, ready to strike. I got one hit in. He instantly hit me back and sent me flying. The hit was so hard, it knocked the battle axe right out of my hands. Before I could get up, he snatched the mithril battle axe, even though I'd only just gotten it. You won't be needing this anymore. In fact, I think I'll make much better use of it than you ever did. 
Goodbye, Zozo. There was an explosion, and the desert ground beneath me caved in, trapping me in a pit. A mogulish disappeared, off to do something awful, no doubt. One step forward, two steps back. From day 95 to day 97, I needed to do something clever to escape the pit. Thankfully, this was where my shape-shifting skills came in handy again. I turned into a bald eagle and flew right out of there, heading towards King Midas' village. With the mithril battle axe lost, I needed to ask him for advice on what I should do next. But it was already too late. When I arrived at the village, I saw it had been completely ransacked. All the buildings were destroyed. I couldn't see any villagers. All that was left was King Midas, near death, next to his broken throne. I flew down and turned into a golden villager, approaching King Midas to see if there was anything I could do to help. I'm sorry, it's already too late for me. Amalgalish used the Mithril Battle Axe to improve his power to unimaginable levels. He destroyed the entire village. You must stop him. You're our only hope. I will stop him, King Midas. I promise, he'll pay for everything he's done. King Midas passed, and I journeyed back to my base. On day 98, I arrived back at the base and found that my worst fears had been made real. A Mogulish had come here too and destroyed everything. The base was in tatters, and most of the tribal gremlins were gone. I'd failed. I couldn't protect anybody or anyone. It seemed like a Mogulish was going to use the Mithril Battle Axe to rule the world. I felt so terrible about myself, I shapeshifted into a cockroach. Just as I was about to give up hope, one of the last tribal gremlins approached me. I'm so sorry that I failed, tribal gremlin. I let your people down from beginning to end. But this isn't the end, Zozo. You can't give up. If a Mogulish could use the magical axe to destroy all this, then maybe if you get your hands on the axe, you can make it all okay again. And in that moment, I knew that the tribal gremlin was right. If that axe could get us into this, it might be the only thing that could get us out. On day 99, I shapeshifted into King Midas himself as a tribute to the great king's legacy. As him, I approached Amogalish's base, wielding his sword of undying. To my surprise, Amogalish himself came out to meet me, holding the mithril battle axe, exactly as I'd hoped. King Midas, this is impossible. I dealt you a lethal blow with the Mithril Battle Axe. You must be... Zozo, and I'll be taking that axe. Yes, to the face. This time, Amogulish lunged at me first, upset at being tricked. But that's when I took my opportunity. As he swung the Mithril Battle Axe, I dodged and snatched it from his hands. Thanks, Amogulish. I promise I'll bring it back. With the Battle Axe in hand, I ran back to my base as fast as I could hoping that it still had some magic left over after all the damage that Amogulish had done with it. I arrived back at my base and began to wish, holding the axe tightly in my hands. I wish for all the tribal gremlins to be brought back and for my base to be fully repaired. That's all I ask for. And seconds later, the axe vanished from my hands, never to be seen again. But my wish was granted. My base was back to normal and all the tribal gremlins had been brought back. You saved us, Zozo. Thank you. And now, together, we can save everyone else. Like Amogulish himself said, just one tribal gremlin doesn't count for much. But all of you together, we can bring Amogulish down for good. Let's go save the world. On day 100, I led the tribal gremlin strike force straight into Amogulish's lair. As wither skeletons poured out to fight us, the gremlins took them on. Gremlin freedom forever! And as the fight raged on, of course, Amogulish crawled out of his lair, ready to fight me personally. You worthless little creature. I should have destroyed you when you were small and weak. It would have saved me a lot of trouble. It's too late for regrets now, Amogulish. They won't do you any good. Stubborn and arrogant to the end. Do you really think you can beat me? You're not even carrying a weapon. I'm a shapeshifter, Amogulish. Don't you know what that means? What? It means I am the weapon. And with that, I turned into my final form, a giant ender dragon. No, this can't be. It isn't fair. I can't be defeated by some other lowly shapeshifter. I'm the most powerful being in the world. But all that complaining didn't do him any good. I unleashed my most powerful dragon's breath attack on him. And by the time I was done, there was nothing left. Amogulish was defeated.
And once the tribal gremlins were done defeating the last of the Wither Skeletons, the world could finally be at peace once again.